is the excellence of Almighty Yah. He grants unto us this day of gathering that we may rejoice. Be seated glad. Lift your hands and just to the Yah. All of His excellence and all of His Berachaya that He has poured out upon you as a nation of people in your surest name. Hallelujah. Ah, oh, you may be seated, Yisrael. What a privilege of grandeur that the Most High Almighty Yahweh grants unto a nation of people that He grants a covenant unto a people that He seals it with His Shabbat. This day of Shabbat home, that we rest and we rest in the assurance of his commands in Yoshua HaMashiach. And what a great blessing that is, that as the old ones would say, there are no burdens. All my burdens have been lifted. There is no weight or yoke that binds me and causes me to miss, as they would say, the mark, the oath of Yah. And how important that is, Yisra'ah, that we are sealed. And his berit, his covenant, it is made known to the nations of the earth because we are people that regard his Shabbat. And we Shabbat, we rest upon this precious and most promising day. It is a time that we come and literally we should rejoice in the revelation of the Torah. When we get that sure seal and the power of his testimony, your sure truly resonating from us, then when we in Yerushalayim, then we shall come before him on the Shabbats and sing of his mighty splendor, his excellent. Because we shall know the power of Yah, your sure, even uh, as he is known and as we see him, we shall be like him. And we shall have the Torah, this living man, this water, that flows from the depths of the riches of that testimony. It shall flow from us. And truly then we will need no man to instruct us or to teach us the ways of Yah. For we will sing and dance every Shabbat will truly be a mo'ad, a time to cool, to twist and dance and shout. And show this reverence for Yah that is beyond any mental ability or capacity to express. It can only be expressed by true light. For light is sweet, isn't it? It's beautiful to see the light. Hallelujah. I was up somewhat early for the Shabbat, I think around 6.30, and I always open the blinds to my office, although it's dark. But when the light comes, the awe, it brings about a refreshing, a revival. And everything began to pulsate. The blood, the organs began to rev up. And there is nothing more beautiful than the light of Yoshua HaMashiach, when he shines from our bosom, Yisrael, especially in a time that the Torah talks about the darkness of the Hoshech. It is the darkness that light cannot penetrate. Even the power of Yoshua HaMashiach, that mind, it will not penetrate that mind. It is a mind that is diametrically opposed to the mind of Yoshua HaMashiach. It will not permit nor allow the power of the works of the Torah according to the life of Yoshua to operate in the bosom of man, mankind, even among Yisrael. And when that light is darkened by the darkness of one's mind, when even that light will not penetrate and woe unto a nation of people. Yah is not trying to shine his light on everyone. This is a generation that is rejected by Yah. It is full of corruption. 
He has chosen an awkward way. A way of preaching. A way that a man kara, he yells from the depths of his being. That he pours out of his ruach with great urgency the need of the wisdom of this powerful testimony of Yah, Yahshua HaMashiach. He has chosen by the foolishness of preaching to save, to deliver us, to pardon us to Yahshua, Yisra'ya, the remnant that believes. Let no one tell you that you're going to segregate yourself in your little damnable, twisted, corrupt world and think that you're going to mature and maturate without jemach, without hearing, your ears and your ears, your mental, your spiritual faculties, your iron is open. You are a twisted beast. It is like a canine, a dog, that knows its master that feeds it, and then that beast recoils upon the master. There is nothing that infuriates one when a dog does that. I have tried to kick the head off of the dogs I have possessed when they do that. And I only like one kind of a dog, and that's a Rottweiler. They're not bolder than me. He may bite me. But I got something to reduce him down to whereby the swarms of flies will carry his caucus off. And that's the truth, Yisra'ya. And Yah sees this nature. Even the dogs do not even desire the precious crumbs of Yahshua HaMashiach. They denounce that. I was pondering early this morning and I had to get up. We shall continue in the path that I said we would. But I want you that have joined us and those that will uh, fellowship with us on the live stream and those uh, that will hear it by the audible form. We have a precious Ach there in Berks Head, Scotland. Ach Dawid, his Isha, Achot Nema. I want us to join in prayer for them. As the enemy come against them with a great assault. But we have victory to assure the power to prevail. He gives us that power to prevail. Uh, that there may be an edoth, a testimony of strength in our bosom. Yeah. Not just in our verbiage, Yisra'ya. Yeah. But it's in our statue as well. You can tell what a man is standing in Iraq. When a man is slouching, his back is bent, his shoulders are bent over his hunchback. When a man of strength, he stands against all the wiles of hell. He stands in the boldness of the Dabar, the promises of Yah. That can never be nullified, Yisrael. It can never, if we simply hear, hear the very first commandment of promise. The first commandment is to shemach ul Yisra'ya here. Ul Yisra'ya, for he is ichat. His strength stands alone. And I want us to join in prayer, in our prayer hours, in time of consideration for our precious Ach, Dawid, Nesha, and his family. Even out of the smallness of his substance, he has been a faithful man even to the simple works of Yah here. And we know that Yah, as our forefathers would say, He is able. Yahweh is able. More than able. You all need to sing that, but with a little more esprit, all right? I want you to sing it with a little gear up. I heard what I said. And so I wanted to be sung with some energy. Your way is a Paul. He's more, more 
for April. I don't want to hum drum chorus of it. I want it to be done with energy and strength, fortitude. That you draw from something that you don't even know you have. Hallelujah. And so I want us to remember this precious Ach, his Mishpaha, his family, in prayer to the chaotic trials and the battles that they are encountering at this hour. There's one thing about the forces of hell and even the nations, the government, they're vicious, they're cruel, and they are corrupt. We live in a society whereby their right hand, the Yamim, the birth of their strength, do you not realize that the birth of creation was by the power of the spoken word of Yah? It is not the concept of some damn amoebos or some kind of evolution that transpired through six billion years. This is such a damnable twisted generation. We cannot even equate with 100 years, 200 years. How does one, even in their scientific powerness, take you back six trillion years? It is so damnable, absurd, and wicked. It is corrupt. It is vile. You can see the devastation and the destruction in a few years. I was driving south on 151 the other day coming home. And I saw this house that in its days when it was built, it was a very nice little home. It was not anything massive. But the construction of the house, you could tell that there was a deliberate effort. There was a tremendous beloved nature put into the house and from the front it still looked very nice I said to y'all what a very nice home it's been empty for some while I said what a very nice home that someone could utilize we have tens of thousands millions of people on the street having nowhere to stay but this is a damnable wicked government that is worried about butchering and killing and trying to bring one of the most corrupt forms of what they call government, democracy. It's corrupt. It, it is wicked. And it robs the essential of every man, woman, boy, and girl. And so as I got closer to the house, I could see the front looked excellent. I said, we could do a job with that house here. And then as I noticed the back roof was all caved in, it was broken down, it was deteriorating. And when the power of Yas Ru'ach is not in this bayat, it's going to decay, it's going to crumble, it's going to fall. And we are going to fall short of Yah's expectation. We are going to be given unto every kind, to show them every kind of demonic power that rules in the hemisphere of mankind. We will see the deterioration. So if we can see in the span of a few years what has happened, what has happened in six trillion, this is a stupid generation and the audacity of these wicked men to think that they have the ability the prowess and the confidence to say that it's been six trillion they can talk about those that were mad scientists and they created they developed what a damn twisted generation we can see here in this nation a nation that is what how old is america as a nation 235 years of last year that's all it is. And look at the damnable deplorableness and wickedness here. Look at it. 
Look at their prestige buildings and constructs and look at them. Look at their massive system of transporting their illegals. And what does it stand for? What is it? It's crumbling. Their infrastructure. So you tell me six trillion years you can go back and find some kind of residue of a nation, a people. You can tell me a rock is 300 million years old. You are jackass. I will sell you the moon. I will sell you the moon. Not only that, I will sell you the sun. We can bargain on that price. What will you pay me for it? You give me 100 million, we'll take it. And I'll pay the taxes out of that. I don't need that much. Give me 100,000. You can buy the moon. You can buy the sun. I was thinking this morning as I arose, contemplating the message today, I have not had time this week, literally, uh, to engage into the depths of Torah to present the continuance, but I will continue from where I left off on the Shabbat. Concerning the oath, the mark, the allegiance, that when a man gives himself over unto the demonic powers of darkness, that his mind is so convoluted, so twisted, so depraved, and so wicked, that he cannot acknowledge or identify the strength uh, of the Most High. He has no conscience of Yah. And the testimony of Yahshua HaMashiach, they will talk about their damn Christo and their damn Jesus, will they not? You blasphemers of hell. Your children of darkness, I will not take one word back. I don't frankly give a damn if you don't like the etiquette of my speech. It means nothing to me. Do they like the etiquette of your sure speech? Your sure said, these are not hard things for you to perceive. What is it that you cannot understand my speech? My words, because we love soothsayers that charm us with their soft words. This is a generation that has blatantly, with great energy, defied Yah. We can see that in the residue of our bosom and the offspring of our own created power that Yah has granted. And we think we're getting by. We think it's okay, but it's not okay. When that mind becomes so inundated, feel. It becomes a mind so induced by powers of darkness that it denies the strength of his name, that it denies the power to confess unto Yah. And then they began to seek out their strange gods, you know that the white Jesus is different than the black Jesus. And of course, the Mexican Jesus is different than the Korean Jesus. And the Chinese Jesus is different than the Nairobi, Kenya Jesus. And the Kenyan Jesus, he's different than the Jesus of Madagascar. You know the white Jesus is different than the black Jesus, don't you know that? Okay. It is a fact. Because the whites got their place and those that call themselves black got their place. Those that call themselves Korean. I will, my friend. His body is Icha. It is one. And the vileness of Yisra'ya. Out of the earth of Yah's dispersing, he scattered them into every nation. Every nation upon the face of the earth, to the extreme, Naseth, to the forest of Kornis. Just like the Samaritan woman, and the Shumron woman with Yahshua, this well is of our father. You know that. That was what the world called a half-breed. That's what she was. 
But she had identity. Your sure did not dispute her identity. He told her her for damnable corruption and wickedness. He said, where's your ish? Where's your man? Where's our head today? What am I? It's so depraved that the power of Torah is not the conscience of that mind and mind is soul unto the powers of darkness. But a mind like that is not refreshed by the hearing of the Torah. It is a mind that is given over unto every kind of devious, vile thing that can be. And because of the state of the emptiness of that mind, because the mind is empty, there is no fulfillment, just like Esau was. He was a hunter, was he not? And that's what this damn wicked world is doing, hunting. Always looking, bargain, hunting. Hunting in the piles of manure and trash. Always looking for something to refresh them. A new experience. And so as he had gone on his great journey to show the power of his proudness, he didn't get anything. And Yaakov was there feasting in the fragrance of the sweet smell of the Torah of Yah. His right as the elect of Yah. His right as the Bokhir of Yah. And here this man, Esau, that represent a nature of the world. Uh, I will bring that out in the weeks to come. These are ignorant men out here. He was famished and he was hungry. Yah says, I'm going to send a famine that's going to cause your weeds, knees to be weak. It's not because of bread, because we're fat and lustful. And that's what that fragrance of the smell represents with your hope. Yisra'iyah, we are the fragrance of the testimony and the power of Yahshua. But we stink like the beasts of the field. Because our minds are beastly. We love some of the most damnable wicked things that one's minds can invent and create. So he began to smell the fragrance of that sweet fragrance of that venison cooking with all the herbs and the spices and the riches. He said, man, give me some of that. He said, I will not. That's why the one said to Yahshua, even the dogs desire the crumbs that fall from the table. Give me the crumbs. Although I know I'm, I'm a Zarephonician, but give me the crumbs that fall from the tables. This is a damn generation that doesn't even characterize itself as a dog. We don't even want the crumbs. We don't even want the simple truth. We don't even want that Yah loves us. That doesn't mean a damn thing to this generation. You understand? Even she desired the crumbs that fell from off the table, Yisra'ya. And so when Esau began to smell that free, sweet fragrance, the promises of Yah were not in Esau, but they were in Yahweh. So he could not eat of the fragrance of that table unless he gave it all up. So it is in this hour. You're not going to have the sense of any kind of equilibrium in this world unless you give your right hand over Unto the devious powers of hell. And so he said, uh, Sell me your birthrights. Give me your bechor, the right of the firstborn, the one that is enriched with the strength of one that has progenerated you through that zira. We have been brought forth by the zira, the seed of Yah. He elected us. He has found no tough in us. There's nothing excellent about us. He has called us into his house and purged us and he has put nothing. He has hatab, he has written and prescribed and uh, engraved his Torah in our minds, in our bosom. 
that we may bring forth the excellent testimony. There's nothing tough in any of us. He found nothing. Yisra'ah was a reject, a naval court. They, Granny would say they stunk. They did not stink. They stunk. They were, and we are, stunky. He said, sell me the right of the inheritance. That is the command. It is one thing that Hoshotan, he is an emulator of Omar Iyam. I said this morning, I want to teach that message on the stones when he offered Yoshua command this stone, not just a stone, but this. As I began to look over that this morning, I said, Yah, if I had time, I would preach it. But I need a little time to labor, to bring forth excellent wisdom that he calls us to examine ourselves. But that's excellent wisdom. Excellent wisdom always calls you to examine yourself. The excellent hukmah of Yah. When the parent would speak the excellent wisdom to their children, they had to examine themselves. Sell me the birthright. He said, I'm starved. And a birthright doesn't mean a dumb thing to me. Huh? It is of no value. I sell you the birthright. Give me some of that sweet food to eat. And I guarantee you when it went down, I know the Torah doesn't say it, nor does Hanak or Yasha, but he puked like a dog. He could not eat. And death immediately began to work in him. A mind that is segregated, separated from Yah, negates the very beauty of the principles of Yah, the aura of Yah. And that is the power of this right hand of passage. Have you ever heard that, the right of passage? In order for you to become a man, there's a certain right of passage. You have to go through a certain ritual. You have to perform certain things. You got it in all of these Greek fraternities and these Latin whorehouses uh, in colleges, they have the rite of passage. Same spirit of the street gangs uh, in L.A., Charlotte, New York. They have to go through their initiation. And so a saw the body is famine. They will sell out your shoe for a damn Jesus and a damn Baal, a Lord, a damn twisted God. They will sell out the name of Yahshua. They will sell out the riches of Yah just to satisfy their belly with the wicked and among evil men. They do not even understand the power of Yah. They will sell out the right of their birthright. They will sell out the riches of the promises of Yah and Yahshua HaMashiach for birthright. This is a wicked generation. And this nation is the cauldron. She is the, she is the big cauldron. She is the cooking pot of all wickedness. Every kind of foul thing comes from the shores of this wicked nation. She is nothing but a, she is nothing but a trafficker and an exporter of every kind of wickedness, corruption, sin, and every kind of foul thing that transgress the Torah of Yah and defies it. She is transporting this damn faggotism and lesbianism to countries and nations say we will not feed you bread unless you receive this beast spirit. I'm going to preach or teach. I don't care whether you like me or not. I got up and I looked this morning and I'll go over this. I looked at the wars of a nation that is only 236 years old. And yet you will hear them say other people in Afghanistan and Iran and Iraq, these greedy bastards out of hell, greedy for money to make money. You will hear them say that uh, the Shiites and the Shunis, uh, they've been fighting for thousands of years. Here we are, a nation that is 235 years old, have had more wars and killings and butcherings and wars with the nation fighting of simple rights of people and yet they think they have the power to repudiate and tell someone what is right 
We are a nation that was built upon the principles of killing, destruction, and death. It is one thing that the nation of Yisra'ya shall be built upon and predicated upon. The coming of Yoshua Hamashiach is going to destroy this wicked world. And those that have oppressed Yisra'ya. Don't sell out your right because you are so desirous to eat off the tab tables of demons and powers of hell. That you eat the filth of the table. And that is the command of Hashatan. He saw that his beloved Esau, he sold his right. And in order for him to captivate, to catapult himself into a kingdom authority of dimension in the minds of the people, he must seal his people. Just like the Ruach HaKodash, it seals the mind of Yisra'ah. And it does it by the fire of the Torah of Yah. You cannot sear meat unless you put it to the fire. You cannot sear it and keep the essentials of those uh, fragrance of juices in. You've got to put it under some fire. You've got to put it under some heat. And once it is seared, it means time. Did not the Ruach HaKodash Come down like a fire, a fire and ush of cloven tongue upon Yisra'ya. Come on, Yisra'ya. This is not the Ruach, what these wicked pigs are talking about. That's not the Ruach of Yah. It is the Holy Spirit. I do my research. I'm an ignorant man. But I am a word fanatic. I'm so ignorant, I must be a word fanatic. I must understand the definitive of a word. That's how ignorant I am. And so our minds have been trained that we hear what we don't hear. We may hear a word and we don't even hear what the word express. And that's the truth. They have this damnable, twisted, demonic power, the Holy Ghost, which is of the Sankris, which is of the he, uh, Hindu religion, and that is what the Sanskrit language is. It is the language of the religion Hinduism. And there is where the word holy and ghost came from when the translator could not find words that were significant for Ruach HaKodash. Damn the Holy Ghost. <clears throat> you that uh, know that I'm blaspheming, write me, because I love to fight. You want to confront me physically, come on, and let's pick some beans. Let's get on this 90 degree heat here in Jefferson during the summer. Come on, let's pick some beans for about half a day. I got them, Ima. And then after we do that, we, we have the pickle of watermelons. It is one thing about that prickly okra and the, uh, uh, and the gases that it lets off. Uh, we'll see how you stand up to that when you begin to itch a little bit. How about that? And after we've done all that, we will uh, weed out a little bit. Not only in the garden, but weed out a little out of you. How about that? And then from there, I will take you to the task from there. That's when the task begins, all right? After that. How about that? You speak with boldness, man. I know I do because I am bold. You are somewhat abrasive. I know it is. The power of his Taurus is a word that is powerful and sharp. You don't sit in the midst of Yah with all kinds of corruption and sin. A mind that has sold out to the world. One of the most prominent and powerful Nobi, the prophets that spoke. Hanach. And he spoke specifically of a time when we began to see the element of this power rise is heard. 
and to purchase the rights of passage into Yerushalayim to bring the offering unto Yah. So he began to, to go aggressively after the nefesh, the mind, the body, the will, the whole of man, to draw it into the delusion, and you seal it by a right hand shake, don't you? I'm almost leery with the right hand shake. Hallelujah. You seal it with the right hand, don't you? You've sealed deals with some of the most wickedest of men and women with your right hand. And we think that it is insignificant. We are wrong. And so he has gone forth with a massive charge to seal his people. And that our hands are given over unto every kind of wickedness. Every kind of unclean thing. And there was one that saw this. He saw the very Acharith, the latter hour of the end time. He saw it precisely. And there were things that even as uh, Daniel Yah had to seal Yachahan, there were things that even he had to seal for the time in the book that it should be revealed unto the messengers uh, of the latter time. We are a sick people. If we don't cry, Yah, send the Nobi, send the prophet. Yeah. And these little immature runs out here, they're not prophets. What are you, man? I'm a simple messenger. I know I'm not a prophet. They think they're prophets and they're not. I will come on, man. You find some of the most shallowest men and they think they have something. They have nothing. Their lives are not in despair but disrepair. And they do not operate according to the Torah of Almighty Yah. So raise up the Nabi Yah, the messenger of strength. Not just a messenger, but the messenger. Has he always done that for the Israel? Yeah. Sure he has. Yeah. He's always done that. He sent Yahshua HaMashiach. And he said, there's one thing I will preach, don't worry. One thing that I must do. Before I ascend into Hashemah, he descended into the earth. And he gave Gemuel gifts to men. He gave them to the Ish. He ordained the power of the Shulish Ach. Those that experience the power of the word in a living, vivid way that they were in the Pornim of Yah, his very image in that body of Yahshua. And he established the gift of the Shulish Ach, the power of that, and the Nobi, the prophets, that declared this message. As there were Melachim or the Melach, as with Daniel Yah, dispensed from Yah to bring the message of truth for Yisraya. And yet he gave those that were proclaimers. Uh, of the Torah, they would, they would go forth into the earth. They had no dwelling place, no belongings. And these damn liars say they, quote, they are evangelists, unquote. Of course, they don't have the ability to live up to that standard that Yah commands. When a man is called to that order, he has no life but the life of the declaring of this Torah. And he goes from house to nation to places among the nations uh, trying to seek out Yisrael. And so among this religious whore, it is just some kind of superficial title today. Well, I am an evangelist. You are a damn superficial man. Woman, sit down. You are lying Jezebel. You said, and I shall establish the power of my re'ach. Yah says, you trust me. He says, I shall deliver unto Yisraya the Re'ach. I will give unto them Re'ach after my own love. And they shall feed them with De'um, with Da'at to discern, to know the truth. And with knowledge with wisdom with understanding they shall feed them 
So if Ahmad is not feeding you, he is not ordained of you. You can buy these nickel dime water down little Osamanats. They hear someone say something and they just follow pursuit. I said to Oxymion the other day, Zohain, Biramin, and Yosef were out there digging in the soil to lay down the sweet potato bed. And so I called him down, man, come here! Because I did not want to do that digging. It was laborious, it was hard. And of course you were sweating profusely. I said, you didn't have to take it this deep, man! He said, yeah. I said, man, you don't have to do it. I'm trying to find every reason. See, we don't want the word of y'all to dig down deep into our bosom. And I'm like, man, come on. No, you got to go down that deep. You got to put down this, put more dirt down. I say, what, what? Don't tell me we don't respond to y'all like that. We began to dig deep into our stuff. We must plow the furrow. We must break up the fallow ground. You cannot break up that ground down to the subsurface unless you use those big tines to dig down. It is going to take a sword that is powerful to cut down in this damn twisted wicked generation. The merchandisers of every corrupt thing do not give our mind, our strength, our right hand, our yamim. Over unto the works of hell that our minds, we are followed by the indication of what is right in our own mind. There's a way that seems right unto man. But the end of that way, it brings the muth. It brings the premature death. The wives and the husbands have no spiritual enlightenment. They're dying. They have no strength of the ruach. They have no love of Yah. It's like two beasts living together in cohabitation, a ritual of performance, and it doesn't produce a damn thing. That big bull, when it gets on those heifers, it doesn't produce no intimacy of love. It doesn't make him love them one bit at all. And yet, y'all created something of a man that should create a, an ichad, a sense of oneness, of wholeness. Because they're dead. Their soul life, their soul out. Continuing in the path, they will fall off, all right. I've had the best of them to say they love me, and where are they now? Hallelujah. The best to say they will stand with me through thick and thin, where are they? Weak, embolsome, and cowardly men. I don't want a coward. I would rather stand with a downright dirty sinner. I know where he stands. We will sing this song, y'all don't need uh, no coward soldiers, high, no coward soldiers, high, yeah. don't need on her, whoa, no coward soldiers, he don't need no coward soldiers, all right, whoa, y'all don't need no, no coward soldiers, high, yeah. no coward soldiers, high, yeah. he, need, he needs no coward soldiers. I don't want a coward in my camp. A coward will betray you. I want the Uriah. I will come on, man. If I got one Uriah, I don't want a coward. I don't want a stinking coward. That's why the military, the officer carry a pistol. That when a coward soldier wants to go a wall, in the midst of war, he pulls it out and say, "Call mama." Boom, boom, boom. They drop them dead. And that's why we carry the sword of the Ruach of Yah to separate ourselves from cowards. I don't want no cowardly soldiers that are weak. Men that's supposed to be mature and have maturated with strength, wisdom of Yah, and they're weaker than a fledgling boy. I don't want that. Hallelujah. That's why they don't like me. They don't like me. There are folks that hear me and they don't like me. I'm going to preach after this. I remember many years ago, I received this email nearly 10 years ago, 8, 10 years ago. I received this email from Jacob Myers, Jacob Myers, his granddaughter. 
And I'll never forget, I wish I had kept the letter. She says to me, Riyadh, that we, I'm glad that I found you there. About eight years ago, seven, eight years ago. She says, you may know my grandfather. This is his name. Well, I knew other man. Didn't know him. She said, I was brought up in this, the name and all of that. But it was one thing I knew. It was a greater proponent to his name than what I've heard. And I appreciate you. Well, I've interfaced with his son, but he doesn't want to deal with me. Hallelujah. Can I preach a little bit? I want to begin here and in the book of Hanak. And the reason I want to begin there is I want to see if there is a, a continuity with the writings of what we call the Torah, the writings of the Nobi, and the books of wisdom. I want to see if what he said is in direct alliance with what was uttered out of the mouths, mouths of those that we are so common with. Yeshaya, Yeremia, Obadiah, we're coming with those prophets. And let us hear of what shall be in this hour. And when the nation of people shall receive, they, he shall cause all, both great, small, rich, and poor, to receive this oath, this mark, this mind that aligns itself against Yah. It is a mind that is hostile. It is a mind that when one hears of the truth of Yah, they, they are ready to fight. They get angry. They get upset. There was one that my Israel talked to on this past week, I believe. Uh, and the person said, I have told them to listen to Reach Jaiwit Yisraya. And their response is that I, and we will not listen to that man. That's all right. I know why they don't want to listen to me. Because their walls are going to come down. Their shallowness. Weak men like weak men. Strong man wants to be around a strong man. Because he learned from a strong man. I like being around strong men. Even as a boy, I could tell the strongest one. I could tell the one that had uh, the authority, the one that had the ability. And I would sit back and look, and I would marvel at that one. I could tell. I would marvel at older men. They had a charm and a charisma. And the ones that had that, you knew that uh, they had authority. I want to teach you a little bit today, preach. I'm going to hollow. You may fall off, but that's all right. I will fall. I will not fall. I, I will simply fall into supplication and cry out unto Yah. And let the wicked come in that stead and let him go down into the gates of hell. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You must be kind, man. Yah has been kind to us and we still don't give a damn. Our minds are damned from him. We condemn his truth. Our minds are shut. We're going to begin here in the book of Hanach. Chapter 108 and verse 1. Hanak. Hallelujah. It says another shefer or book writing of Enoch. It says which he hatab, he inscribed, he wrote. For his son Methuselah. He wrote that he may have a heritage and an insight as to what shall be and what will be. That that is what Yah has done in the book of life, Yoshua. Are we the sons of Yisrael? So the book has been written unto us. In the volume, did he not come in the volume of the book? So the volume has been written unto us. We are the sons of Yisrael. We are the being, the children, the am, the nation, the Uma of people of Yah. And so this is because Harak represent one that did not see death. Yah, he is alive, he has never... He's never died. You're sure couldn't have been wicked. Because if he was that so, there is no sting of death to the Siddiq. And those that are Siddiq, they shall never die. So he just closed his eyes and said, here I am. 
And what we saw that there was no animation in that physical body. That's all we saw. That's all they saw. That's all Miriam, Miriam Magdalene. That's all they saw. And we all said, get up. He said, all right, get up. And we're going to get up. We're just going to sleep. He said, oh, Lazarus is not dead. Come on, man. What are you trying to do? Play, play. You don't play the run off me, man. He said, he's just sleeping. That's all he is. He's just sleeping. You're trying to mock us? You think that we're jackasses? We got him wrapped. He's prepared for burial. Where were you? And that same word said, get up. And he got up. Yisra'ya, when we hear the word, we will get up. If we learn how to hear. So, Hanak says that this was written for Methuselah. And not only him, but this is vital in the next, as I proceed. He said, and for those who will come after him. Have we come after Methuselah? Have we come after Yoshua Hamashiach? But those that will bow or enter into the covenant of Yahweh revelation through Yahshua HaMashiach. Those that will come after him observing or shema, guarding, as with the hedge of thorns, uh, observing uh, the Torah in the last days, in the Akhrith. And those that observe, those that guard the Torah. Yahshua is our living Torah. We must guard that testimony. You, we must keep it uh, 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 invigorated in us. It must be refurbished continuously, and thus by hearing uh, the Torah of Yah. Our studies produce nothing. I don't care how I study one of these, I preach, I learn because, wow. And they can preach the same thing I've studied. And yet when they began to declare, it brings, up, uh, it brings out the nuances uh, and senses and, and the tentacles began to go over. I say, oh my, that's, wow. Look at that, yeah. So those that would come after him, that is what this is written for us that will come after him. Hallelujah, hallelujah. And those that observe the Torah of Yah. Verse 2, uh, he says, you who have observed the Torah... He says, you shall shema, you shall wait. You shall wait through great adversity, oppression. There shall be agony of pain and you shall not murmur, not complain. Because uh, we are the promisera. We have the Zaba, we have the word of Yah. We have the living Torah of Yah. That's why when we see the very nature of this uh, vile working of hell, uh, we can't sell out, we can't get weary. We cannot ask, what do I do? We come before the altar of Yah. We enter into the bed of Yah, into the presence of the fullness of Yah, that we stand in the poor name, his face. You can't be asking that question. What do I do? We stand in the Torah of Yah. We stand in his truth. We stand in your sure Hamashiach. You're not going to overcome in your twisted Jesus, your Lord, your Baals. You're not. And that's a fact. That's a fact. Oh, you're hearing me now, and so uh, you better be inquisitive and cause you ought to cause your mind to be troubled. You're not going to enter in. You try to come in any other way, you're a thief and a liar. That's why Hashatan says, uh, command this stone. I am the one that, I am the one that brings you into the fullness of life. You can't go in but one way. There's only one way. Hallelujah. He says to us, hear this carefully because it's vital. What I want to show you of this time, the process of this mark, how it is induced into the mind of man. That we began to sell out the fragrance of the beautiful uh, perfume or uh, door of Yahshua. We began to negate the power of that testimony. It is not what pity him these lying henchmen of hell are saying. It is not these damn liars, the Ken Hayes uh, and his brother that have wrote these damn twisted books. Talking about this false thing, the rapture. 
It bring you the revelation of your sure in these little fantasized, fictitious stories. You better wipe that damn mess out of your mind. It's a lie. Anything that has come from that dirty whore, you destroy it. And so they have their little cute, fantasized stories. They do. They seem real, but they're fictitious. They're not based upon the truth, Yisra'ya. They're not based upon the prophets. They're not based upon the messengers of Yom. You who have observed Torah shall wait. And he said, I want you to make, wait patiently. Uh, the word patiently, I must express it. It is cool. Just like in the days when one said, you're cool, man. It is cool. And it, 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 it means that there is dancing and twirling and twisting and shouting. That's what cool is. When one was cool, they walked different, did they not? They walked different than everyone else walked. They were cool, you understand? They were real jettisoned and cool. And so that's what the word patiently, it is to uh, endure the afflictions, but you dance and you twist and say, oh, Yah is tough to me. Come on, Yisra, Yah. That's how we must do it. We do it patiently. In all the days, all the days, for what reason, the Hanach? Until the time, until the time, until the time, the season of those who work ra, evil, sadistic, vile maneuvers that work evil is complete. And the power of the wicked one is ended. The one that is the orchestrator of every kind of deceivable, wicked works. There's one that his power resonate out of one that he has caused to rise up out of the children of deep darkness. And here her short time rise with a, a government of kingdoms. Oh, you think it's going to be some, you know how ignorant we are. We think that he's going to say, this is the government. It's going to be all democracy. A government or the Mishram, it is run from the mind. It is one applying their hands to it uh, to work on the cause of the government. It shall be ruled by the Ruach, the spirit. The spirit of darkness and devious works. I don't give a damn if they're in communist uh, China. Whether they are under some kind of totalitarian system uh, like this nation. Uh, I was reading this morning, you see, they read, they put an article out the other day how that the death of the Chinese workers there in China for the, uh, the iPads and the great amount of, of, of danger they're subject to. And then I looked this morning whereby it was nothing but a fabrication of lies. This is a nation that loves lies. She was built on, we love lies. We love lies more than truth. We love the shekha. We love lies. We love lies. And yet the one that wrote the article, he said, I stand by my journalism. And it's a damn lie. He's of his father, the devil. That's all it is. This is a nation. It was not built or established by the hand of Yah. It was established by the will of Yah that he is in control of all things, Yisrael. That's what that is. He brought it forth for what? Its own demise. And to scatter a nation and people, not only are they in Shibuth, uh, in the physical sense where their minds are in bondage, uh, you can't even operate in the Ruach uh, yeah. Our minds are given over unto every kind of whim. The wicked one tugs and makes us go in the direction that he wants or the system. That is a fact. That's why we need the mind of Yahshua HaMashiach. We need that mind, Yisrael. He said, until that one that works out of the power of Hashatan, until Yah has completed his work. Don't you know Yah has established him? Do you understand that it is the will of Yah? Don't you understand that Yisra as a nation, as a people, they're going to cry out, they are going to seek. We've sought everything there is. We've sought riches and jobs. We've sought opportunity, wives and husbands and children. Fun time, but we have not sought Yah. And then we seek him with all of our love, all of our love, all of our koach. 
And all of our nephesh, he shall be found. We're not seeking him. We're not seeking him as a hidden true treasure. That's why Esau were able to sell his right to the privileges of Yahweh. We're selling them for nothing, Yisrael. Until the time of that one, until the power of the wicked one ends. The kingdom of darkness is coming down. And if one gives us a great illustration of that, can I read this in the book of Daniel? Yeah. Hallelujah. Daniel, Daniel chapter 12, verse 10. Y'all commanded him, for there were words, or the speech should be closed up. He said, until the time of the end. Are we in the Akharith? So this must be revealed unto us. It must be revealed unto the true messengers that Yah has placed his finger upon the prophets, the profound messengers of Yah. You can be a prophet all you want to in name, but it doesn't mean anything. Daniel Yah said, I saw the revelation of that time. Daniel Yah 12, 10. He said, and there shall be many, they shall be bara, they shall be purified. And we know how Yisra'ah is purified by the test, by the refining of the fire. His word is powerful, it is sharp. His word is a consuming fire. It is an ish. It is an ish. It is enunciated in the same phonics like man, I-S-H, but it's A-Y-S-H for the fire. And that's why he has set the fire of the seal upon man's head. And that's why the woman in this religious hour we in, this religious harlotry, is trying to displace the head of man. And that is what Hashatan will do. He will displace the authority of Yeshua HaMashiach with a testimony of lies and corruption and effeminate testimony. Any time a man gives his strength unto a fledgling Matthew is on, he's weak. I don't give a damn who he is. He's a weak pig. He's a weak pig. And anytime you have no standards of truth in you, that someone says, well, you should do that, this is that, and you fall for that, you're not even a weak boy. You understand? You're not a man. As my oldest brother said to me, boy, don't vasculate, don't be a pancake. He was a pancake, but I was no pancake. You understand? Yah says we shall yah die if we continue in this truth. He said we shall yah die, we shall experience, we shall know, we shall have a testimony of experience. And it makes us free. I believe that. I buy that. You don't have to, but I buy it. Hallelujah. Daniel Yah says... Many shall be barah, they shall be tested, they shall be proven, and they shall be made laban. Well, I know what the white ones that have contacted me said about this. You see what it means? There is no damn white man, no more than it is a black man. There are organizations that those individuals that are part of them, I remember this elder, Elder Butcher. Down there in the islands of the sea, he started contacting me. Uh, and he was a part of Jacob O'Meyer's there. I said, Elder Butcher, send me some of your tapes. And let me play them on our radio station. For, just let me play to other people. He said, I can't do that. I said, what? You tell me? You can I have to see the elders. You tell me? You got to get, you have a gift in you? You, come on, man. I didn't want to be bothered with him. I'm like, okay. Yeah, I'm like, not I am like, I'm like. Man, that's weak. I don't want no man like that. I don't want his messages. Hallelujah. I don't want that. I don't want what he has to say. It's of no value to me. He says unto us, Yisra Daniel, Yah, we're going to be made white. We're going to be purified. And the word Laban, can I express to you what that means? He said we're going to be made pure. We're going to be made white. And there are these twisted-minded fruitcakes. They all got their doctrines. It is low, like L-O-L-A-W hyphen B-A-N, Loban. It is simply implying this. Uh, the Loban, uh, it is to be made bright, complete, whole. But the essence of the root of the word Loban is simply this. That it is bricks that have been made. Do you understand that? In order to make a brick in the kiln, 
You've got to get the heat up, man. You've got to get the impurities out. Is that right? Yeah. I remember in the fifth grade of school, we made beautiful vases. I kept that thing even when I was married. And I knew mines were perfect. I pound that clay. And then the, we would have an art teacher come once a week or every so often in the segregated schools that I was in. And so I made sure that uh, I, uh, I, I pounded that clay and get all the impurities out. And so when it had to go in the kiln, we put color in it. It was so beautiful when it came out. I can draw, I know, remember those colors. I had the purple and the yellows. It was just beautiful. And then when you lift it up to look at the foundation of it, all that had been broken out. I was so sad. I knew that my, my party, in every great house there are vessels of all kinds of elements. Vessels of gold, of silver, sand, of clay, and wood, vessels of honor, and vessels of dishonor. That Yah would allow us to be dishonored, that he may get the honor, Yisrael. Yeah. When I saw all the basin of that broken, I, I, it was somewhat sad. Sir. But no one could see that, only I knew that. So as long as they could see we are broken inside because we don't have the power of this testimony, and the enemy sees that. That's why he continuously to feed us with this folly. And I will show us what that folly is, all right? He said, many shall be made white Laban. In essence, we're going to be the refined bricks to build this true bed of Yah. And every, everyone is going to fit in his place like the, like the house, the bed of Shalomo. And it shall stay in his place. That's what this is for, Yisrael. He said, and many shall be made white, and they shall be uh, shara. They shall be tried. They shall go to great trials. Uh, he said, but the rasha, the wicked, they shall do rashak. They shall do wickedly. And some and none of the wicked shall understand, but the wise understand. Do you hear this? Daniel Yah, 1210. He said that mind of our will continue says, to operate in a wicked agenda. And the wicked, the rasha, those that are not governed by the Torah of Yah, they shall do wickedly. When their minds are not governed by the Torah, they will call upon a corrupt Jesus. And a damn Be'el, damn Lord. And when they understand the power of that truth, they should take vengeance. Well, we got to be gentle with those. Uh, uh, Yah has showed us the greatest of gentleness, has he not? Yeah. Everyone knows that for Yah so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. Everyone knows that. Everyone knows that, but it doesn't have any value or essence to them. It doesn't mean a damn thing. It has no value at all. And so Yah says unto him, these things must be sealed for the season, for the time. The wicked are going to do wickedly. They're going to be criminals against Yah. They're going to be criminals against this Torah. They're going to try to dismantle. They're going to try to destroy it. They're going to establish their own ways and make their ways perfect. Because this is the order of the kingdom that shall be. And I shall, uh, and when I eradicate the wicked, there will be no more trouble for Yisrael. He's going to bring his people into the fullness of his promises. And that's a fact. You don't have to buy it. It's still the truth. He's going to bring them back into the fullness of his promises, Yisrael. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Back to Hanach. Hallelujah. Verse 3, Hanach 108, verse 3. As for you... Wait patiently uh, until sin of the hatta, the captivity of sin that caused you to go astray and to do that which is contrary to Yah, until sin pass away. For the names of the sinners, for the name of those that defy Torah, for we know sin is a transgression, it is a feshat. It is a defiant, blatant defiant uh, of this living Torah. We know that sin is the transgression of the Torah. He said, until the name be machad, blotted. The names be exterminated, obliterated, destroyed, extracted. Until the name be blotted out from the sefer, the book of Chai, the book of life. Until their names be eradicated. Until they be torn out the pages of remembrance. Just like Esau when he sold the right of the kingdom. 
We give our minds over unto the sensual pleasures of this wicked world. We're selling out the right of our sonship, of our inheritance, Yisra'iyah. It is the mark of a true devious wicked mind. Not only that mind has the mark of the numbers of the beast and man, did not Yah destroy the first world because uh, the imaginations and the thoughts of man that were evil, wicked only, continuously? Uh, he must eradicate her to that. And that's what Hashatan must do. He must establish uh, the birthright of his seed uh, in those individuals. Uh, he is seeking out the house of Yisrael to destroy. The name shall be taken out of the book of life and the books of Yahweh, the Kodash one. Uh, he said, not only that, but the Z, the Sira, the Zira, the offspring, uh, they shall be maha, they shall be exterminated and obliterated. The seed shall be destroyed forever and their spirit shall perish and they shall die. And they shall cry and lament. Was there one that cried and lamented? His name was Esau. Did he sell his right? Did he cry? Did he seek a place to make Teshuva? Did he make a, try to find a place to shoot, to turn around, and to strive in the ways of God? Did he not? Did he not lament? Did he cry? He found no place of repentance, did he? He found no place to reconcile to Yah. He could not find the body of Yahshua HaMashiach. He could not find the Edah, the power of that testimony, Yisra'ah. Yeah. I said to my issue, I'm not going to preach much today. I'm going to take my time. When I say that to her, she looks at me like, okay, crazy man. Yeah. I know better than that. As my little ones will say, who's preaching today? You preach too long. In Pesach, when you all go on that trip, they won't think the riding is long. and They won't think that. You preach too long, Reach. And even my little gentle friend back there, little one, he thinks that I stand up here too long. Too long, man. Yet my Achmikaya says to me, you don't stand long enough. I'll take the happy media, all right? Hallelujah. This is going to make sense, all right? He said, they shall lament in a place that is invisible, cannot be seen in Midbar, in the wilderness. That's where. We're in a wilderness that cannot be seen with eyes. You don't see the powers and the, and the very dearth of where we are. You don't see the landscape, Yisrael. Balaam, look, and, and the ass says, man, hold up. You're crazy, man. You're trying to curse that which Yah has brought. He has bowed his ears to. And the old ass said, get off me. You go on. Hallelujah. Yeah. He has chosen us. We are an ass, Yisrael. Yeah. Yoshua came to establish the beauty of the coat. He said, you go and find the coat that has never been written and bring him to me. Tell the master of the house uh, that Yoshua Hamashi has need of him. He has need uh, of one that uh, is pure in their conscience. We are virgins. Uh, we do not contaminate ourselves with the world. That's why there's a promise zero unto Abraham. Uh, out of every tribe, uh, men of strength have not touched themselves uh, and embarked upon this uh, uh, traversing of the world in their minds, uh, experimenting uh, and trying to find uh, the essentials out of the powers of hell, uh, and giving the enemy room to enter in to penetrate them. And they began to so see their minds have not been sown that way, Yisra'ya. He said, they shall lament. And that's what's going to happen. We see when you give your right hand, you say your right hand. You're going to lament. And that's why many are lamenting. The world is lamenting, isn't it? It's full of agony and pain. Hallelujah. We're in the presence of Yah, even the day there shall be fullness of his shimsha. And in his what hand? The right hand? There is... Come on. There's hafiz. Ulam viet forevermore. Let's eat from his right hand. Not from the left hand of the wicked one. He wants the right hand. Come on in the church and we give you the right hand of fellowship. 
talk to me, Yisra'ya. You sell your hand. Do not they do that? I can't remember years ago, about 25 years ago, this preacher said, we want to give them the right hand of fellowship, and I want you. Uh, I say, I can't go there, man. Uh-uh. I even knew that was wrong, even as ignorant as I was. I was ignorant then, and I'm even more ignorant today. You've never seen that? Come on in the house. Everybody give me the right hand of fellowship. The seal of Hashotan. You have come into the Baptist way, the Methodist way, the Pentecostal way, uh, the Hebrew way, the, the Jewish way, the Protestant way, the Greek way. Uh, talk to me, you might as well. Uh. Give me the right hand of fellowship. Give me the right hand of fellowship. We get the right hand of fellowship. Of course, the Baptists are excellent at that. The Methodists and, and all the dim people. All the dim people. And we are too. We bring them into the fellowship of our wickedness and we begin to spew our filth that even their conscience cannot correct us. And they will not speak against our validity, our, our vileness, and our corrupt nature. I don't want no one around me like that. I want someone to confront me and tell me. You don't even have to speak to me. Your walk in life will just confront me. Your way, the way you walk. You know the way I used to go. I don't go no more since Yahshua laid his hands on me. Oh, yes, so you know the way. I used to talk, I don't talk that way since y'all laid his hands on me. Well, oh, you know the things I used to practice, I don't do them no more since the Torah of Yah opened me up. I don't walk, I don't talk. Those old ways, I'm a new man in Yorkshire, Hamashia. You got the beat off. No, I got the beat right. I got the beat right. You mess up a song, I intend to. Because those are the songs that messed us up. They had a Baptist singing. I don't want to sing it like the Baptist. Well, it's not how the Protestant all the way I used to walk deadest. Hell is not dead. Oh, it's not the way of the Lutherans. The way I used to walk. Come on, get real. We must sing with a loud voice. Hallelujah. This is the dead generation because of sin. And the reason we're full of sin because we don't obey Yah. I want to finish this today, all right? Look at it in Hanag 108, verse 3. As for you, with, wait patiently until sin pass away. And the names of the sinners shall be, they shall be blotted out of the book of life. And the book of Yah, the Kodash one. He said, the seed shall be destroyed. They shall be exterminated forever. And their spirit shall perish and die. They shall cry and lament in a place in an invisible wilderness. And the burning and burning in the fire, for there is no ground there upon the earth uh, that they can rest in. And that's what Esau did. He tried to find a place and the, he was in a wilderness. He was in a midbar. He could not find Yah. And even Yahweh. Because of his surmising, Yah had it all under control. And we don't think that Yah has it under control. He has established the powers that be. Yeah? He has established the government. He put Mr. Barak Hussein Obama in power. Just like he poor, put the other devils in power. Just like Bush and the Bush before him, the pile of Bush and the adulterous dog of a Clinton and all of the rest of them. The white D. Eisenhower and Mr. Kennedy and all the pigs, Mr. Johnson, they all were pigs. Huh? The whole nature of that office is a pig. I heard Mr. Bonner, did you read, uh, come on, the, uh, the, the house, uh, the, the house whip, say that the people in Senate, is some of them, they are some of the most ignorant people in the earth. They're stupid. You look at some of those men, insecure men. That's what they are. You can look at their features until they're insecure. I say, well, he was a boy. He must have been bullied. 
He had no assurance. That's what they are. That's what they are, insecure men, men that are not assured. So they, they find themselves in a, in, a, in a state of power. So they're going to dictate and mandate to the people. That's what's going to be. You're going to accept faggots. I'm not accepting no faggots. Yeah. I'm not going to put my hands on a damn faggot dog. Yeah. I'm not accepting no damn lesbians, no butch bull daggers. Yeah. And no woman is going to instruct me in the ways of God. I'm not accepting that. I'm not accepting their damn Jesus and their BL, their lords. I'm not accepting that. It's coming from the wicked. A wicked man is one that the Torah calls Rasha. One that is a criminal against the Most High. I'm not buying their lies. I am not. You may buy them, but I will not buy them. Hallelujah. He said they start in this invisible midbar and the fire as they try to run. There's no hope from them. We're not going to get away from Almighty God. This is that generation. Well, is it anyone that gave us any kind of credence unto what Hanak says? Turn quickly to the book of Tehillim Sons. Chapter 69. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. This is this wicked generation. Tehillim 69. I would have begun in verse 26. Daiweed said, for they have rada, they have persecuted. They have been hostile. For they persecute him. Whom you have smitten, you have nakha. Who are they persecuting? This is a generation that persecute Yahshua HaMashiach. Yah has smitten him. He has been bruised for Yisra'ya. And this is a generation that persecute him. They deny his name. They deny the truth of Yah. They love a twisted freak on a cross named Jesus. Listen, I'm not going to regard that damn lie. All liars going to hell. There's no liar that's going to stand in the presence of Yah. No liars enter into the gates of Yerushalayim. None. Liars are the same state of these, uh, of these perverted, uh, convoluted mind individuals uh, that are adulterers uh, and thieves. It is of the nature of Hashatan. And I will not accept it. You do your thing. Don't try to impress me with that. Don't try to press that upon me. Eh? Well, we're all the same. You're a lie. We're not all the same. They are children of darkness and they are children of light. They are those that shall sit on the right hand of Yah, the power of the pure birthright. And those shall sit on the left hand, which are the goats. And we are damned of a goaty people. We like trying to butt heads with Yah. We try to butt heads with the Torah. We don't want to accept the simplicity of the Torah. It doesn't take a mastermind to understand this. It takes a willing love. A love that takes pleasure in our boss speaking unto us to understand. That's why we have no understanding. These fools rather talk about the Illuminati. Damn the Illuminatis. Damn the Billbergers. These are buffoons that are fearful and scared. They have no power. Hell, if they had power, then they would meet in the open. When I go places, I want you to see me. I'm here. That's the truth. We were in the store the day just walking. And as far as the world, this very voluptuous, attractive young woman, she sees this man, and she just turns and says, you look so... She didn't even know what she said. You look so good, man. <laughs> but there are cats that would have seen that and say, what? She was nice looking. She said, you look so good. She, Come here, man. Come here. We're crazy people. Let's deal with reality. That's what she said. It was almost stunning. I'm like, wow. <laughs> you ain't talking to me. You're talking to him. <clears throat> Oh, she's talking to him. She looks at him and says, hmm. Well, there are men that would have run like a dog on puke for that. She was not a bad looking woman. Very shapely, everything. Everything in the world said, this is it. Look how quiet we get. I'm going to preach. Hallelujah. That's a fact. As old preacher would say, I was going to preach. How's about that? Hallelujah. Yah has, he has nakah, he has smitten Yoshua. 
to Helium 90, 69, verse 26. And they that talk to the grief of those whom Yah has wounded. And there is a generation, and this will be the nature of this beast. Well, why are you wounded if he loves you? We're wounded. Is Joshua our friend? He says uh, unto the Shilishim, he says unto them, he said, a servant knows not what the master does, but you are my friends. And I tell you what Yah is doing. Are we the friends of Yahshua? Yeah. Have we been smitten as he was smitten? Is this the will of Yah? And so the mind of this beast will say, you are of Yah. Why are you in that condition, those circumstances that surround you? Why? And they will cause grief and mock you. But look at Yah, though. He, he got it all in control. I'm glad of that. Verse 27. He said, they will talk to us that way and they will add iniquity, the ovon, to the iniquity. He said, and let them not come into your sadiq. Don't let them destroy the righteous uh, uh, Brit of Yah in your mind. He said, don't let them come into your sadiq. Don't let them come into your righteousness. Don't let them defile your righteousness. Uh, of course, we, we're tired of letting them do that. He said, don't let them come in there. There's a reason why. I will show you. Don't let them come in there. That's what the enemy wants to do. He wants to come into your sadiq. Uh, and he wants you to establish what is right in your own eyes. All the ways of a man, uh, they're sadiq in his own eyes. But yeah, he ponders, he weighs, he balances. Uh, the ruach of uh, a uh, man, he balanced the nefesh. That's what they will say. Because they add iniquity to iniquity. The wicked shall do wickedly, like Daniel said, and they shall not even understand. But those that are wise, they shall be now. They shall understand. They shall be able to discern and know what is upon us. Hallelujah. That's why we need the fellowship. Fill ye not the fellowship in the hour that we are in, Yisrael. Yeah. He goes on to say, he says, uh, Yah, in the power of this utterance of prayer and this interaction with Yah, to Helium Psalm 69, verse 28, he said, let them be blotted. I want them, let them be blotted, exterminated out of the book of life. Isn't that what Enoch said? Did he say that, Yisrael? Yeah. I read that he says in Enoch 1083, For you wait patiently until the sin pass away, for the names of the sinners shall be blotted out from the book of life. Does not David utter the same thing? Sure it does. Sure it does. Sure it does. This book is one. Uh, the reason men don't understand because they read it like a little novel experience. You got to dig into the depths of this. When you feel like sleeping, you got to dig. That's why I was up early this morning. Y'all just give me the continuance. I've had to work this week. You get over across that road and drive in some t poles, you. My elbow's been hurting me all the week. You drive in some of that. You get out in the garden and plant, and you, you do what you have to do dig in holes and all. You will fight out. You all know. Hallelujah. Let them be blotted, let them be macha obliterated, exterminated out of the book of the living, and not be written with the Sadiq. Don't even let their names be a part of that. Don't even let their names or their identity be compared to, with Yisra'ya. That's why the enemy is trying to seal. He wants the right hand, Yisra'ya. That is what the firstborn, it represents the right hand. It represents the authority of the one that had been birthed under the covenant of Yah. And that is what uh, Yishak, he birthed two sons, uh, and they were birthed under the covenant of Abraham. Uh, we are birthed under the power of the covenant uh, of the firstborn uh, of Yahshua HaMashiach. You don't give them your right hand. You don't give them your right hand of fellowship. That's the truth. Hallelujah. I feel all right now. Huh? I feel like churning a little bit. You understand? I'm pressing on now. I got the mood revved up. You understand? I, I, the, the, the heat is on. He said, blot out their names. Blot out. It's same words that Hanak express. Blot out their names out of the book of life take it out 
and let them not be written with the Sadiq. Let not their names be written with the Sadiq. Let them be crushed. Was not your sure Dakha? Was not he not crushed? It says so in the book of Yeshaya. I want to read this because it's vital as we connect all things. The book of Yeshaya, Isaiah 53 10. Hallelujah. We're going through great afflictions, are we not? We're having the mach'ub, the pains of Yah. It's like a woman in travail, in her, in the, in the very trials and the very agony of bringing forth a child. That's what the mach'ub really represents. She's in the thralls of that pain. And what pain? The body, Yahshua, as the prophet speaks to Nobi of Yah with great utterance to us, Yeshaya 53.10, he said, yet it pleased, does it say that? Yeah. Hafiz, yeah. Hafiz, Ya took delight, it pleased Ya to Dacha him, simply allowing him to be crushed. He's going to allow this government to crush us. And he's going to rise in the excellence of his splendor and power. And no weapons that shall come against Yisrael, his nation, shall prosper. And every tongue that rise up in judgment against us. That's why you don't allow them into your siddiqah. You don't let your guards down. You don't let your mind down to, to receive the rite of passage that you may enter into the abode of fellowship. You don't do that, Yisrael. You don't let yourself go whereby there is a, there is a satisfaction, there is a comfort in the midst of this wickedness uh, that is trying uh, to convert your mind uh, into the mind of their father. They have no control. They have no power to do it. That's why even the princes and the powers of the earth, if they had known the secrets in that body of your shoe that would have been revealed, they would have never impelled him at all. And they don't understand, although there are many that read the book, they don't understand as Yah allows and it pleases them to bruise Yisra'ah. They don't realize the very agony in the earth of Yah, his Hamas, his terrorist activities that's going to be poured out. They don't realize that. Oh, I know you like shake and bake preachers that shake and bake you a little bit. And you can say, that was so sweet. We want the shake and bakers. No shake and bake here. You're going to get the red, real bread here. You feel if it's this bread, when this bakes in that oven, when this bakes in that, we're going to have a nice brick. It's going to be a labad. It's going to be white. It's going to be tried. It's going to be saraf. It's going to be tried by the fire. Intense. Tested. Yet it pleased y'all to bruise him. To crush him. He was put to grief when you shall make his nafesh an offering for sin. He shall see his zira. He shall prolong his days. And the pleasure of Yah shall prosper. Where? In his hand. In the right hand. Where he sits. At the right hand of Yah. Does he not sit at the right hands of Yah? You're sure? And the pleasure of Yah shall prosper in our right hand. Yes, Yah. What is his pleasure? He has given us his daba, his promises. That's what he's given us. It is in our right hand. And that's what the enemy wants. He wants your yamim. He wants your right hand. He wants the strength of your birthright. He wants these promises whereby they have no power uh, uh, to, to operate in you. Whereby there is no strength of your sadiqan, Your righteousness or your righteous act. That you operate in a mind that is opposed to Yah. And a mind that rejects Yah. That's why these Jesus thumpers can operate in their Jesus mind. And that's why the Muslims can operate in Allah. And that's why the Jews can operate in the sadistic messages and lies that they declare. That's the truth. I'm not afraid to say it. Hallelujah. Well, that's his people. That's not his people in that land. There's not his people. Are there some? Sure, there are some. You're not going to find Yisra'ah. You will find them immersed into every nation, every culture. But to say that little bit of people there, that's the house of Yisra'ah? And say they have robbed the birthright of others? That's a lie. You call that a blessing with every kind of tyranny and killing and robbing? If their mighty one is alive, that Yah fights the battle for his people. 
You don't need no nuclear bomb. You don't need to burn your neighbor's ba bellies, uh, babies. Yah says in the Torah, even the stranger that is born with you, uh, those folks that were born uh, with them, among them, those folks in that land, 90% of them uh, are not original to that land. Yah say, if, uh, if a stranger or a, a gay, uh, if he dwells, go or live, uh, he's born among you, you love him as a brother. He's a damn lies. That's why not in a day she could flop that big black titty out uh, and put it in that little hard-headed, ranting little youngest mouth, that little white boy, and she would love it like her own. That's the damn truth. Yeah. She would love it like her own. She put that big titty in his mouth, uh, and the baby would suck that titty, and she would love it like her own. Yeah. We are an ignorant people. We are ignorant. We are so damn ignorant, it is pathetic. We don't want to deal with the realities of truth. Mammy Jones? Yes, sir, boy, come on here. Mammy Jones, can you give that boy some milk? Yes, sir. Put the tit in his mouth. Isn't that strange that we kind of cringe on that? I don't. Because it's the truth. Even a stranger that's born among you, you treat them as one of your own and you love them that way. You understand? That's what Yah says. He says to Yaakov, don't hate Esau, don't Hey, he's your brother. Here's your ark. Here's your ark. I will show you next week why and how you will know Esau. Esau. I will show you. It's in the book. These ignorant fools do not study the book because they're arrogant. That's why Shaul wrote to Timothy because he did not want Timothy to rise up in his youthful nature because he knew there was some damnable dynamic men in Torah knowledge among him. I use the word damnable because they will break down the strongest whole house. There were elders that came among Timotheus that were powerful men of wisdom, knowledge. How did Shaul know? Because he had met them in the way. And he knew they were powerful. And so he instructs this young man, just don't rebuke an elder because of someone comes to you and say, you know Zokim, bitter me, you know Zokim, Mahalaya. He said, just don't do that, son. He said, don't do that. He said, you don't rebuke an elder unless, it's in the, unless it has come your way by the mouth of two or three witnesses. This is the essence of what he was saying. You just don't bring an elder before the, uh, for, before the congregation uh, and deride him and rebuke him. You don't do that to an elder, what he was saying. Uh, so he, he, he comforted uh, uh, Timotheus. He says, son, uh, study. Lahak. Meditate. So you will know how to interact and to deal with the elders. Uh, the hand of Yah by your Ema Yudas was laid on you by your grandmother. It was bursting you. Come on, Ema Yunus. Cannot go around. Torah of Yah, woe oh, you cannot go around. Torah of Yah. He said, So you began to lehach, to show yourself approved to Yah. As a messenger, as a man of strength, and you must write Sadiq. Rightly divide the words of the Torah. So that's what's being preached today. Oh, study for yourself. How in hell? Folks don't even know how to study. That's why he wrote that to that young man. You don't go there and mess with Zachane Shimri. That old man has been around. He's wise. He's watched things. He's like a stupid kid. Well, that's not the way it should be. A stupid. Just like a 15-year-old telling, Daddy, I'm quite sure you raised two. You got a son and a daughter. They've never thought that you, you didn't know what you were saying. Sure they did. Mama, Daddy, Mama, but Mama, Daddy, Mama, 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 They discount the experience, the wisdom, and that's this wicked generation. It's discount the horrid, hoary head of a man and the gray beard. And the, they discount that. They're stupid. They're stupid. It will make sense. I'm, I close it all in here. All right. Don't worry about it. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Verse 4 of Hanak. He said, And I saw a rasa. 
I saw it was vis visual, visible. I saw there something like an invisible cloud. You did? And though I could see that it was completely dark, yet I could not see the flame of it, of its fire, because it was burning brightly. And there were some like bright mountains which formed in rings around it, which was tossing it to and fro. He said, I saw something. You must understand that this was sealed unto the day. He said, I saw something that was profound. I saw this tremendous hair. We know that the hair, even as Mount Gerizim, it is the place where the true worship or the Shekha of Yah goes forth. That's why Hashatan took him to Mount Gerizim, to the high place. That's why. Bow down and fall prostrate and worship me. And he said, I saw this thing that there was an invisible cloud. He, he just saw your sure and the power of your revelation. He just could not explain it. Yah must go before us, Yisrael. We are a cloud of witness of the testimony of Yahshua HaMashiach. It is invisible in this dark world. No one is going to hear it. That's why we have to be wise as a serpent and harmless as a dove. He that is wise when nefesh. Yah is wise, isn't it? So he wins the nefesh. He wins uh, the being or we would say the soul. That's how it is. But there was one that saw this profoundly and utter unto us the same cloud, the same fire. It's found there in the book of Shemoth, Exodus 13, 21. It's found in the book. Hallelujah. Your God's Yisra'ya, he guides us by his pillar and cloud of fire. It says in Shemoth 13, 21, it says, and Yah went before them by day. I'm introducing this as I read in Hanak. You'll understand and understand the importance of the right hand. He says, and Yah went before them by the day in a pillar of cloud or on her, And he led, he nacha them uh, the way. You see, that's the way that, uh, that the Torah is. Uh, did Yahshua not say, I am ha derech, derech ha, the way? Is he the way? Is he the way? Is he the way? Is he the way? Sure he is. He led them in the way. In the way, Yisrael. Yad Hanak saw this way, the cloud. Before there was a Moshe, there was a Hanak. Hallelujah. Before there was a Moshe, there was a Hanak. And he sealed it until that hour so Moshe could see it. And Yah kept them in the way. And by night, a pillar of fire. He said, I saw the flames of fire, Hanak says, burning brightly. He said, by night, a pillar of fire to give them earth, to give them light, to give them the light of the Torah. The Torah is a lamp unto our feet, Yisrael. And a light unto our pathway, the way. You hear these individuals say, well, all you got to do is keep the mitzvah. That's not so. When a man loves Torah, when he loves Yah, the mitzvah, the stipulation, uh, he gave us ordinance, statutes, and commands. We keep them all uh, in, the, in our compliance with what he commands. Uh, and we do it in a living way. We don't have to come and look and see the writings. Uh, we don't have to go on to Levi and say what it says. Uh, we have a new and a living way in the power of the testimony of Yahshua HaMashiach. And these men are liars. They are de they're rejectors of truth. Uh, I don't give a damn who the man is. They're liars. Every word of Yah is pure. What he wrote unto us by the chronicles of the Torah, by Moshe, even out of the mouth of Shalomo, as they exercise in those principles, it is valid today. It still takes the dom, doesn't it? So if that is valid today, then everything he wrote is valid. These are liars. You don't have to keep them all damn, you damn liars. Tell the world they'll keep the birthdays and the anniversaries and the parties. Do they not cool or twirl and dance? 
That's what the more them are for, that we show our children that. That's why he says that they are to every generation. The generation is door. Olam, oli, olam, ivad. From ever, forever. And so you celebrate them in a way that the children say, oh my. Don't they do Christmas like that? And the children carry on that condition? Don't they do the hog day of Thanksgiving like that? Whereby people were butchered and slaughtered here like beasts of the field for the damn greed of a people, a wicked people. Set down in their hog guts and their lapses and all of their dainties. That's the way the more them should be. We should be excited about them. That's what the word more means to twirl, to dance, to sing, and to shout, and to move in the ruh of God. That's what it means. You go to these places that are dead as hell. Folks standing up there like this. Got some dead person up there talking. Well, we're going to talk about the instruments of the temple. How about that? And the folks sit there so dormant and dead. No life. You find the power of that rock. That's far there. As the old folks say, baby gal, when the fire begins to burn, you got to move. You're going to have to move now. And they're dead, twice dead. The sins, and so they sit there and they sing like that. Come by here, ya. Yeah. Come by here. No, don't sing it like that. Oh, come by here, oh, ya. Yeah. Come by here. Come in to your bed, ya. Yeah. Come by here, oh, come by here. Come by here, oh, ya. Yeah. Come by here, come by here, come yeah, in your sure humble tree, come by here, oh, come by here, come by here, oh, yeah. You go to the dens of the world, they cry, pump it up, pump it up, pump, pump. We go to pump it up, we go to pump, 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 pump. Hypocrites. I said to Mama, I'm going to stop early. She doesn't even respond when I say that. She just looks at me. Say, man, I've been with you for a long time. I know better. You're talking how you feel right now. You get in there. We'll see. I will finish this course. Hallelujah. I will finish this. We need to finish this today. Hallelujah. It says in verse 22, he took away the pillar of clouds by day. He took not away the pillar of cloud by day nor the pillar of fire by night before the people. He is not going to take away the witness of Yahshua HaMashiach. In the midst of all the fire of hell, and the earth is going to be consumed with the fire. When the powers of hell, the gates are open, the heavens have pulled back its rugs, and the gateway of darkness shall prevail, that even this one shall rise up and he shall cause fire, to come down from the heavens. But it's not going to be like the fire of Elijah. Hallelujah. Yah is the all consuming fire. Yah shall not remove the comfort of that cloud. There's nothing like a cloud in a hot day, is it? And yet over Yisrael, Yah shall the cloud dwells in the midst of the heat of the day, in the midst of all of the hardship. Will you see them falling at your right hand, at your right hand, at your right hand, at your right hand, at your left hand. You just stand still. In the midst of all of that agony, we must do that, Yisrael. Hallelujah. We must stand still. We have to. It's the command of Almighty. So he's not going to take away the cloud. You don't see the cloud, did he not? How did I say in this invisible? It was like an invisible. Are we not in a wilderness? Are we not in a midbar? And yet we don't see the cloud because it's invisible. We see the clouds out there, but we don't see the cloud of his uh, chavod and the cloud of his honor. You see the sun rise at its peak during the summertime here, but you don't see the fiery chariots of Yah. Just like the ass says the Balaam, man, he's standing there with the fire of Yah. You don't see that, Yisrael. 
Oh, Yahshua is going about his anointing our eyes. Don't worry about it. He's going to anoint our eyes with the eyes. Hallelujah. Is that all right? I like that. Oh, folks, that makes me feel nice. I like the way that makes me feel. Hallelujah. If I preach my last message, I want to preach it like that. If I die like that, I die like that. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. He did not take away the cloud. He's not going to take away the cloud of witness. He isn't. I don't care how dark it seems in this whole shack. I don't care what it looks like. He's not going to take away that cloud of witness. He's not going to take away that pillar of fire. Even though when the enemy comes in to try to overtake you, there's, there's a fire that burns in you. Yeremia Yah say his word is like fire. Shut up in my bones. It's the fire. It's the ish of Yah. And that's why he gave us man to represent the power of that fire. What are they doing today? They're trying to make men faggots. Make them effeminate, soft men. You find these little soft faggot boys, they're the faggot boys. They're not men. Hallelujah. They're soft, they're feminine. No love for Yah. Don't even instruct their family in the ways of Yah. Have no love for them. Greedy, big belly dogs, all they want to do is eat and play video game. Watch television all damn day. That's all they want to do. Huh? Sit around and lie and grin. That's a child's mentality. I'm a man. That's what we need. Hallelujah. You're not going to get this without plowing. I said to the old I said, man, we got to put some more manure in the garden before we plant the corn. He looks at me. Yeah. Yeah. Because he said, we got to put the tying down there too. But I know what that means. You got to sink that bad boy down in the ground and, and that big old 170 horsepower tractor. That's a big tractor. She sits up if, if, if you don't get it right. She sits up and she, and she can't do anything. She sits up. When y'all get the, he, he, get, he get this sword down in that head, you're going to sit up. That's all right. Hallelujah. Again, Hanak says in 108 verse 5, he said, Then I asked the Chados who was with me, saying to him, What is this bright thing? For it is not a heaven, but merely a flame of fire, which burning and a voice weeping, crying and lamenting uh, as strong pain or mechob. He said, what is this thing? What is this? He says, is there any record that can be left for us as a nation that we will understand the dynamics of this? I want to show you the record that Yah says to Moshe, you write this in the book of Leviticus. This is the record too. In the book of Exodus, Shemoth, Exodus. Exodus, hallelujah. We're going to appear before the presence of Yah, we're not. Was that not the presence of Yah, the cloud and the pillar of fire at night? We must all stand before the judgment seat of Almighty Yah. We're going to all stand in the presence of Yah. And yet, when Yah says to Moshe, I want you to bring those men that are qualified and ordained, I've ordained, the 70 Zakim. And I want you to bring them up into the high place that we may meet. Here in the book of Shema 24, verse 10. It says, And they saw Almighty Yahweh. They saw the Abba, Shemoth, Exodus 24, 10. And they saw the Abba of Yisrael. And there was under his feet, as it was a paved work of sapphire stone, as it, was, as, as it were the body of Shemayim in his body. Brightness, uh, his to have in the brightness, his power to purify in the brightness and in purity. Was not your sure? He said, I saw this brightness and all this great pain. Did not it please Yah? Is he not the right hand of Yah? Is he not the strength of Yah? Is he not the heritage of Yah in him, the birthright of Yisra'ah? The revelation of Torah that is profound, is it not in him? He had, had, had there been anyone or has there been anyone whose body was marred as his body? Anyone that was beaten uh, uh, and taken to such extremes like him? He didn't see the clarity of all that. Uh, although he saw metaphor, he saw realization of it. But he did not see the metaphor, the realization of that. In, in, in that time, it was meant for us. That's why y'all did not cause Levi uh, to be given over unto service to but for one thing uh, and to bring the knowledge of Torah until the wicked men like Ila Ila and his wicked sons they began to rise up and we saw corruption. That's what has happened today. 
We see the corruption today. Wicked men making their sons the leaders after they die. All of them do that. Raise up a corporation for their son and their daughters. Nothing but a business entity selling flesh, robbing the people. That's all they are doing. Nothing else. If a man raised his son right in the ways of Yah, his son will know. There will not be any dispute. There will be no battles. Was there a battle between Yah and Yahshua? Was there a battle between Yah and Yahshua? Even in the midst of Gethsemane, he began to cry out and pray, to, and the sweat fell off like great drops of blood. And he concluded, it's not what I think in this flesh, the agony of it. He says, it's not what I think to be to, that pleases you, but your, what's your pleasure? Yah says, my pleasure to bruise you. He said, I saw much pain. Hanox, I saw much pain. And under the auspice of this formidable, wicked government, as this one stands in the wide place and he cries out to the allegiance of hell, to activities that denounce Yah, to works and practices that conjure up every kind of demon that was cast out of Hashem I am when Hashem rose up against Yah. It's not going to be a democracy or independent government. It's going to be a government of the mind. It's going to be a government to, uh, to exact strength uh, and the very desire and the will of a legion unto Hashatan. Uh, just like they did in Hashemayim. It rose up against us. A man that rises up against Yah. Rises up against Torah. It's a man to create these damn false laws in Jesus. Uh, your damn white Jesus is going to hell. Uh, your damn black Jesus is going to hell. Your damn Jewish Jesus is going to hell. All of your Jesus are going to hell and so are you. How about that? That's not sweet, man. That, that is sweet. Hallelujah. Isn't this a beautiful picture? I want to paint this for you in the book of Ibram, Hebrews. Hallelujah. This is what he saw. He said he saw this brightness, bright mountains. He saw the Ruachim of Yah, like great pillars, the seven Ruachim. He saw Yahshua. How do I know? Because Shaul tells me this in Ibram, Hebrews, chapter 1, verse 3. Did he not say he saw this brightness, Enoch? That's what I read, did I not? You want me to read it again for you? He says... Uh, in Enoch 108, verse 4, I'll drop down. He said, and there were some, some things like bright mountains which formed a ring around it, which were tossed into and fro. That's what he said. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. In the midst of all of that, is not Yahshua the Ruach of Yahshua in the midst of all the wickedness of the world? He saw all this in the midst. He saw these bright mountains uh, in the midst of all of this, this burning fire, this brightly thing, in the midst being tossed to and fro. Is not Yahshua's name being tossed to and fro? Are we not being tossed to and fro? Is not the sinner of the wicked ones attacking us? Sure they are. Everything the enemy does is attack us. Uh, he sees not only the very brightness of Yahweh, he sees the, the prophecy of the time and what the attitude of the people shall be. Listen to this in Ibrahim 1, 3. Uh, who being in the brightness of his splendor, your show was the brightness of yours, excellent. Uh, the brightness of his splendor, uh, in the express image of his person, uh, and upholding all things by the word of his power, he upholds all of the standards of Yah by the word of his power. He is the word of Yah, isn't he? He upholds it all. That's why he's going to uphold all things. That's why he's going to uphold the very uh, condemnation of sinners and those that defy Yah. When he had by himself purged our sins. I'm glad of that. Did he not purge our sin? Purge our sins. Sat down where? Sat down where? It is the seal of the authority. And they shall receive a mark in their mesach or in their yamim, in their right hand. He said on the right hand of the father. Did he not? He sealed the authority of our birthright, our sonship, our authority, our place in Torah. That's what he did. And he sit down on the right hand of the majesty of high, the most high. That's where he sits. So I saw all of this. I saw the pain. And he asked the Malach, what is this? Hanak 108 verse 6. And he said to me, this place which you see, it shall be taken the spirits of sinners. And those that got up, this wilderness, this place that's desolate. It shall be the place of what sinners and those that God have, that blaspheme, that replace Yah's name with a damn pagan Jesus, with a damn pagan Be'el, with a damn pagan uh, God. 
That's what it is. It is to reproach his name. It is to think literal. It is to examine his name to have disdain for it. That is nothing more repulsive than that. What man wants to walk in his house and call his wife Betty Jean and her name is not that. Come on, Yisrael, yeah. Or she called him Mac Daddy Willie and his name is, uh, she know his name. Uh, come on. He says, sinners and those that got after revile, yeah. And those who do evil, uh, those who alter. You hear that? Those who halaf. Those who twist the word of Yah. They say, well, his name is that, his name. Uh, we don't speak language Hebrew, but these same corrupt beasts, these damn liars, uh, we say hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. These same, same corrupt liars, uh, the same ones that call themselves Hebrews, uh, you are sons of Esau. That's what they, I can prove it in the book. Hallelujah. As old Bishop Binks would say, what does the book say? What does the book say? It's in the book. That's what he would say, it's in the book. I will work on that. Don't worry, y'all. Don't worry. We, we got everything covered, all right? He said, they do evil and who alter all the things which Yah has done through the mouth of the Novi. They alter what the prophets say. They change it. They halaf. They twist it. They wrestle with it. All the things that have been said. Some of these little wicked whole houses. You heard the individual call me last night and said, he, you know, he was kind of afraid to mention the man's name, which is wrong. Uh, there's one down in, the, in Texas that says that uh, uh, Hashatan is a she. I said, you talking about Israel Hawkins, the lying serpent of hell, uh, this pedophile, this freak. That's what he is. I don't take it back. He loves those little black girls from the island. Freak of a damn beast. And them crazy people sit under that dog. Had one of those that are members with him. Been one of the original 40 people with him. Calls me one day. Well, you don't have to judge me by him. Well, man, if you sit under that damn beast, how can two walk together unless they be in agreement? If he barks like a dog, licks like a dog, laps like a dog, it's a damn dog. Hallelujah. Yeah. So you're talking about that pig there that loved those little girls from the islands? They come here afraid, fearful. The parents don't know. They got confidence in this damn beast. He's supposed to be the, one of the, the majors, uh, major nobby, right? Elijah. He's a liar. I will tell him that he's making millions of dollars off those little ignorant people. Selling them foods and all of that. Hell, their place, they have millions of dollars there. We have pennies, but our place is nice. It's clean. It's immaculate. We eat. We live well. And we li I do. And they make millions of dollars. You can go to all these, what they will call us a compound. Hell, they got a place where they can pop a tent. But they have no place where the people can come and eat. At a beautiful place, they can sit down and dine. They don't raise no organic food. They buy it from the stores uh, and charge them outrageous prices. Uh, they're those that will celebrate the Pesach. How many folks can go to the past uh, and, and, and get out a fatted lamb, a fatted goat, and charge them $40, $50, some $100 uh, for a plate of that? That's a damn wickedness, man. Your grandson to us freely, then you bless Yisrael. You sit down, man, eat. Sit down, you Yisrael, eat with us. Just don't try to take advantage of because I, we don't bear the sword in vain. We got swords, all right? You call us sword, whatever you want to. We got one of those. We got an helip. Matter of fact, let me keep it out of the sheath. I don't like to put it there. I like to keep it here. Hallelujah. Conan has nothing on this. You understand? Nothing. Can I press on? He said, those who do evil and those who alter the things of Yah has done through the mouth of the Nobi, all of which 
have to be fulfilled. All of this mystery has to be fulfilled. They have altered the word of Yah. They have changed the image of the uncorruptible Abba into an image of a damn corrupt God. This damn freak faggot Jesus uh, and all of the other images. They have changed the image of Yah into that freak. Yahshua is the, he is the visibility of the living image of Almighty Yah. That's what he is. Uh, hallelujah. Not Yah is just a spirit or a ruach. He is ruach. He is Ruach. Oh, folks, say, I can feel him all over me. I can feel him in my house. I can feel him on my job. I can feel him when I'm walking day or night. Oh, I feel Yahweh. Oh, I feel Yahweh. I feel him all over me. Oh, I can, I can feel him when I talk. I can feel him in your cue. Oh, I feel him in my hands. Oh, I Feel him in my foot, I feel him in my dance. Oh, I feel your way. Oh, I feel him. Feel him all over me. Yeah, yeah. I, mama, make you, Mr. Ryder, make you get up and dance back there. How about that? How about that? You're the, you, you, ooh, you're the children of Yah. I bow before you. He brought us. Baruch. Barach. He simply bows. That all, that's all right with me. Hallelujah. 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 It says that those who have altered the word of Yah. But he uses the word gradaf. They have blasphemed. That's the spirit of this age. That's the strength of the mark of the sons of destruction. Can you say that with any clarity? There are those who will not even believe the book. They say if, if it's not in the renewed uh, or the Brit Hadassah, or the new covenant, I won't believe it. Well, let us uh, pierce our eyes here upon Gilgana, Revelation, chapter 13. Hallelujah. The one that shall rise up out of the system of the world. We, 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 we create prophets and messages in our minds according to our likes, don't we? Sure we have. But he is one that shall rise up according to the mind of the nation. A mind that is corrupt, a mind that opposes Yah, a mind that rejects Yah. So out of that shall rise up this false, this pseudo man that shall do great things and shall cause the very minds and the legions to be given over unto the powers or the legion of hell. And Yochahan, he saw this in a very profound way here in Revelation chapter 13 verse 6. Hallelujah. He said, according to this worldly system, when this false prophet, when this prophet of hell, he opened his mouth, and he opened his mouth with gada, with blasphemy, to speak vile, to speak repugnant, and yet they will speak very honor for the name of Jesus, and they will have disdain for the name of Yah. They love the name of Christ. Damn their Christ, their priest. He is the Hamashiach. He's the one that the all of Yah's gladness uh, through suffering and death was poured out upon him. Uh, we are the anointed ones, uh, anointed by Yah. See, the Christo is just one that has some anointing. The devil has anointing. By his who's he was feared by a small, great, rich, poor, and all. He done wonderful works. Sure, he did. We have been elected, Yisra'ya Bayah. Let us rejoice, sell our rights away for the pleasure and for season. And he opened his mouth against blasphemy against Yah. That's what he does. You will know his children, they will blaspheme his name, they will reject it. I don't care if it's your mama, your daddy, your sister, whomever. And they blaspheme his name to blaspheme his name or his shame, Hashem, the name. They speak vile of his name. They speak evil of his name. And not only that, but his tabernacle, his sukta, 
Are we not the sukkah of Yah? Does not this ruach dwells in us? And they speak evil against his people, those that are elect, those that are chosen by Yah. And to them that dwell in the Shemaim, those that dwell in the heavenly with Almighty Yah. That's why our mind should be on the things that are heavenly, on the things that are above, and not on the things of the earth. That's the reason why our mind should not be on the situal things. Our mind should be on the things that are above, heavenly and pure. Hallelujah. And he says, so this beast, this milach, they poured a vial upon the earth, Yisra'iyah. And he poured out a vial upon the sun. And that power was given unto him to scorch men. That's what this word is going to do. It's going to kill men. And that's what it does. Hallelujah. Revelation 16, 9. Revelation 16, 9. And when men were scorched with great heat and blasphemed the name of Yah, which has power over these plagues, they repented not to give him honor or kabod. And the fifth milak poured out his vial upon the seed of the beast, this mind, this kingdom, this, this, this service tour of darkness. And his kingdom was full of darkness. The minds uh, have no insight to the light of Yah. And he said, and they gnawed their tongue with pain. Was it not what Hanak said here? And I saw the pain. Hanak 108 verse 4. He said, it was a bright light which rings were about it. And he says here in verse, uh, where is that? Let me find it quickly. Hallelujah. Verse, uh, verse 5. He said, and there was lamenting as well as strong pains. Did he not speak of the strong pains? Did he not speak of the sinners? Those that practice hatta, sinning against Yah? He spoke of that, didn't he? You all have to stay with me, Yisraya. Because there's one thing, I am a student of words. You are, we are students, we've been taught to be students of, of an overall picture. No, you cannot even get the picture until you understand each word. Hallelujah. He said, and when this darkness came upon the earth, here in Revelation 16, 10, the earth was full of darkness and they gnawed their tongue for pain. There was such pain upon them, they gnawed their tongue. Well, what is the Lashon for? It is the power of the testimony of Yah. For out of the abundance of the heart, the belly, out of the abundance of the kidney, of the source of life, the mouth, the Lashon, the fifth, speaks Yisrael. There shall be an abundance of the power of that testimony in us. And they nod their tongue because they're blasphemed. They speak vile against his name. Your kinfolks, your relatives, your children, your sons and your daughters. They have disdain for his name. They take it nonchalantly. You don't sell your sadiq to them. That's mama. Mama going to hell. Daddy too. That's a fact. Children as well. He did a new thing then, didn't he? He's going to do an awesome thing in this hour. He opened the earth up then, didn't he? And they swallowed. He's going to judge every man, every woman. Hallelujah. For the deeds that have been done, not in your nice ways, but have been done in your flesh. You better get it right. Hallelujah. And that's a fact. You would think of all these pains that they would repent. Did Asaph repent? He didn't repent, did he? Esau, Esau, he did not repent. He could not find a place. And in all of this agony, even in our minds, there are us that our minds are in such agony and tr such travailing that we will not go to the right hand of Yah. We will not go to Yahshua. We go to the hands of darkness. And in all of this pain, they, they, uh, they gnaw on the tongue uh, in verse 11, and they blaspheme Yah of Hashemah because of their pain uh, and their sores. Uh, and they repented of all their deeds. They repented not. We don't even repent of our actions and our deeds that we perform and do, do we? And they repented not of their deeds. They did not make teshuva. teshuva. They did not shu. They repented not of their deeds. That's why there must be messengers to bring light to this Yisraya. It's all right to talk about the tabernacle. It's nice to talk about the furnishing of the house. But we need to talk about the furnishing in this house. And get that damn mess out of your heart, out of your mind, Yisraya. That's what we need to talk about, that furnishing. Hallelujah. That's the furniture we need to talk about. Back to Hanak 108 verse 7. I'm coming to a close here. Don't worry, but I'm going to finish. 
For some of these things were written. Do you hear that? Did he not tell Daniel to seal it up for the time? For some of these things were written and sealed above in Hashemayim. So that the Melachim may read them, the things that are written, and know that which is about to befall the sinner. Is not the Melach a ministering uh, messenger of Yah? So these things have been trusted into the hands of those that will not defy Yah. Hallelujah. The spirits of the ones who err, who err, who willingly practice sin, as well as those that defile their bodies. We're defiling the bed of Yah. We're defiling our bodies by offering up the offerings of darkness. Giving our minds unto dark matters and credence of hell. Giving our strength and our birthright to be entangled in such wickedness that we embellish it. We bathe ourselves. Our minds are so caught up in wickedness. We don't know how to free ourselves, Israel. It cannot be, people of Yah. Hallelujah. They defile their bodies revenge themselves on Yah. They get angry with Yah. They get mad at Yah. And they work together with evil people. You tell me you work with evil people? That you give your strength unto those that are full of evilness? Yah said that. That's what the messenger said. There are things that the Melach, that Yah has sealed in the heavens. And the only way they're revealed, he sent it like he did Daniel Yah, the messenger, the Melach. And it brings it and he brings it and opens the book unto the messenger. And when he opens the book, he sees it. I don't care what his travail is, his trial, he sees it. We need men like that, Israel. Let nobody kid you. Let nobody kid you. We need messengers like that. Hallelujah. We need them. We need men like that, that they will utter with the thunders of the voice of Yah. Hallelujah. 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 They revenge themselves on Yah. They are angry with Yah. And they work together with evil people. The thunders of Yah. I want to touch this in Revelation 10 and 4. The seven thunders of Yah. Revelation 10, 4. It says this. Hallelujah. And when the seven thunders or the ra'am had uttered their voices. That's what he said. I was about to write and I heard a voice from Hashem said to me, seal up those things which the seven thunders uttered and write them not. Is that not what was said unto Hanak? Did he not say in Hanak 108 verse 7 for some of these things were written and sealed above. Does it say that? Oh, I'm on track, Yisrael. Your mind may not grasp that, but I'm on track. Did he not command him to seal it up? When the seven thunders of the voice of Yah, we have heard our Zachenya Ramayah trying to enlighten us and bring out the, the, the very dynamics of the voice of Yah. But we don't hear that. You know, little, this little child said to me uh, yesterday, this morning, she, uh, and the other day she said, she said, you know, Ray, our Papi, she said, when that thunder comes, it thunders, and the thunder is going to thunder today, it's going to thunder tomorrow, it's going to thunder Monday, it's going to thunder maybe Tuesday, it's going to thunder tonight. She was telling me about the thunders now. And she said, Papi, I'm scared of the thunders. When the thunders, they make my heart hurt, and so I have to run in the bed with Papi and Mommy, with her daddy and her mother. And see, the thunder of your voice doesn't move us that way. He said, I heard the seven thunders of the Milach. The seven thunders uh, had uttered their voice, and I was about to write, and I heard a voice from Yah speak to me. Seal up those things which the seven thunders utter, and write them not. Don't even write them. They're not meant. They're meant to be in order to those that are truly in the Akharith, uh, and the messengers will proclaim them, because those things have been sealed by the Melchim of Yah, he has put them in trust. They guard it. And when the time of the dispensing and the messenger shall go forth, then they shall go forth. Oh, that's the truth, Yisra'ya. They're ministering Ruachem of Yah. They're ministering spirits of Yah. Hallelujah. Zakain yeah. has tried to warn us of the power of Yah's voice. I want to illustrate just one thing that he did bring to us in Tehillim. In Tehillim 29. If you read Tehillim 29, it shows us the sevenfold powerful essence of the voice of Yah. To Helium Psalms 29, 1 through 7, you will see all the aspects of the volume of the voice of Yah and the thunder. 
That we said in Psalms 29, 3, the voice of Yah is upon the waters. And he brought that out to us, the Mayim, the, the nations, the masses of the people upon the waters. Uh, and the almighty, and the almighty of splendor, he, Ra'am, he thunders. He calls his voice to speak. He say, Yah is upon many waters. His voice is like a thunder. When he, he, when he cried out of Hashemah, when Yahshua was immersed, he cried out in the thunder of the heavens. This is my beloved son in whom I am her face. I am well pleased then. His voice thunders, Yisraeli. And just like the child demonstrated to me yesterday and today, when Yah speaks to us, it should cause us to tremble and fear. Oh, that doesn't mean, the Yare of the Yira doesn't mean that. And I heard one even among us that from this Rostam began to teach that in a way in his subtle wickedness. He means just what he said. Would he kill them? Would he kill Korah and Dathan? He intended for Yisrael to fear him. He did not just intend for you to reverence him. But I want you to tremble at my presence. I hear what men say. I hear what they say. Oh, it doesn't mean you have to fear him. Yeah, he means tremble. You piss in your clothes. Yeah. And Granny said, I'm going to snatch your nut, but I'm going to whip your ass. You tremble because you knew she was real. She didn't kill me. I'm not dysfunctional. You may be. Well, she taught me love. Hell, my grandmother didn't know what love was. No more than your wicked father, your wicked mama. My father taught me love lies. How can a man without the conscience of Yah teach you what love is? Uh, he taught you a pattern uh, that was an emulation uh, of what we call love. But he, didn't, he couldn't teach you a damn thing about love. There are men, their daughters, say, oh, my daddy taught me how to love. Your daddy didn't teach you how to love. Here you're the only one not to love and your other siblings, they're damn wicked. They don't even know how to care for you. And yet your daddy taught you how to love. He didn't even know Yah here is love. If a man say he loves Yah and keep his commandment, he's a liar. Yeah. So how can you teach someone love when you don't even know the commandments, when the commandments are not dear to Yah, when the mitzvah? Your daddy didn't teach you a damn thing. Your mama didn't teach you a damn thing. It taught you lies and forms of ritualism, and you thought it was love. Well, I know the words say that the, the, the world loved their own. There, there's an aversion, there's a care for them. They love the fellowship, but they will kill each other. They will slit one another's the throats. They will turn each other in. There can be some of the tightest cats in the world. They go out and commit a crime, eh? and the lawman said, boy, we got you. I got you on camera. You might as well tell me. Well, it wasn't me. It was Akshimri. He did that. And Yosipiah, he came. Of course, he get Yosipiah. He said, no, no, that was preacher, man. He was, that was real. He did, he did that, see. And I was just, I, I was scared. He gets him and says, oh, no, no, it's Yosipiah. He did that. He did that. And he's the one that, that took that, took that money and stole that. You will find out how much they love you. I'm talking about dead bone brothers that say they love each other. I'm talking about those that were so tight that they were tighter than glue. Yeah, when it comes to the real deal, you will find out how much they love you. See, the love of Yah, your shoe, he loves us so much that he gave himself. And that's what a true friend does. They give themselves. They suffer the pain. This is a wicked generation. If a man finds one or two friends in life, he's found a blessed thing. And you don't do a friend wrong. You never do a friend wrong. I look at your hurt, your emotions, your state of mind. You never do a friend wrong. You do it right, my friend. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. This is the catalyst and the condition of the people here in Hanak 108 and verse 8. He says to us, listen, hear this. He said, those who love Yah, those who care for Yah, those that are inspired by Yah, have not, they have, those who love Yah have loved neither gold nor silver. T.D. Jakes tell you to get gold and silver. You got these lying little shiftless liars call themselves preachers telling everybody to buy gold or silver. That's their saving power. We buy the Torah of Yah. We buy that which is refined. We buy the experiences of Yah that's refined in our lives that make us of the system, substance of gold or silver or money or kesef. We are the kesef of Yah. Those that truly love Yah, they don't love gold, they don't love silver, they don't love riches, they don't love houses, they don't love land. 
nor all the tough things which are in the world. They don't care for the things in the world. Their mind is not on the things of the world because they know that that is the tool of the power of hell. But they have given over their bodies to suffering. That's what he said. You know why we cannot care for anything? Because this is a, this is a magnificent tool of the enemy. That's why he keeps our minds always on things. I got more shoes than I will ever wear. My Isha makes my clothing and she does an excellent job. Come on, Yisraya. She does a wonderful job. I, I can't go buy clothes in the store. Uh, 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 come on, that, tell me. That, that's pretty nice, isn't it? She did that pretty nice, didn't she? Sure she did. If I get something to fit me, mom, is that wide in the waist? If I get a 50 coat, a 49, then you, the pants are 49. That's how they make them. Because when they say a man is that big, if you got 49 choice, you got 49 girth. So she does an excellent job. Appreciate that. I owe you, okay? I said to my issue, I say, what would it be like to have $500 a month? She said, ooh, I don't even want to think about that. She said, that's a lot of money. <laughs> Come on. That folks look at 500 and say, that ain't no money. <laughs> I said, $250 would be nice. What? <laughs> Hallelujah. I know it will for her, boy. <laughs> Two hundred dollars a month. Hello. All that I need is in your shoe. Huh? He's satisfied. Joy supply. Life would be worthless without your shoe. Huh? All things. I find in the Torah of Yah. Yeah. Shalom and contentment is in your shoe. Joy he supplies. Life he fills my bosom. There is no other way that I desire only in your sure I find Shalom is that alright let me finish up quickly Yisraya I want to close out here give me a few moments Harak says those who love Yah love neither gold nor silver nor the tough things which are in the world but they're giving their bodies to suffering. Why we cannot love that? Because your sure expressed unto us here the Norbi Yakahan in 1 John 2.15. He says, love not the world, neither the things that are in the Olam. If any man loves the world, the love of the Abba is not in him. For all that is in the world is the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, the lust of the flesh, and the pride of life. You don't want to love silver or gold. You love truth. You love Yah. You love his Torah above all things, Yisra'iyah. You don't want to do that. These things are not of Yah, but they are of the world. They are not of Almighty Yahweh. Hallelujah. So we cannot love the world. That's why we don't love that. That's the true sign. And we got these mercenaries of hell say, God wants you to have houses and land. And I believe that because Hashatan took Yeshua up in the, into, the, into the high place and showed him all the kingdoms, Kol, K-O-L-E-O, the whole, all the kingdoms of the world, a moment of time. He said, you bow down, baby, and just show me some, and don't diss me. He said, I'll give it all to you. And the shaking of the hips and all. Yeshua said, you beast of hell, get behind me. You worship Yah and only Him do you worship. Yeah, we worship Yah. You damn hypocrites that deny your show, we worship Yah. Yeah. Hallelujah. 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 We don't reject your show, denounce the power of Yah's heart. You don't understand the power of the fathers of the mother's heart unless they speak it to you. And they got to make it living within you. This little fellow right here, he knows me. He know, you'd be surprised where he comes to me. He, he knows me. When I, when I go and speak, his sisters and what he like, preacher man. His little rock is even gentle with me now. That's the truth. It is the truth. Hallelujah. 
Hallelujah. Verse 9 of Enoch Hanach. Who from the time of their very being have not darash, they have not long or cared after earthly food. We don't care about things like that. Who regard themselves as mere passing breath. That's all we are. We're pilgrims. We're in the world, but we're not of the world. We're passing through. They have just, they regard themselves as passing breath. That they have observed this matter. Yahweh have put them through much nasa, much testing, refining. Uh, then uh, he received their pure ruach, their pure heart, their pure offerings, their pure oblation. He received their pure spirits so that they should rock his name. So they should bow and bless his name. You are liars when you say you, it, it makes no difference. You are liars when you say it's all right to work on the Shabbat. You are a filthy bastard. You are a mamzee. You have no birthrights with Yah. You are a filthy bastard. And I don't take it back. Hallelujah. At least our illustrious president, Barack Hussein Obama, he said that he was a mutt. He said, I'm, I'm a bastard. He said, I'm a mutt. And some of the pigs that are around him are less than mutts. You understand, they're real bastards. They're real bow wow dog dogs, you understand? He got us in a mess. Hell, what was the 43, 42 before him? It is right. Hell, you tell me this half breed in three years has gotten us in this shape? You damn liars. You, you, you coward of a beast. You don't even have the courage to say, I had a hillbilly in this town one day, said somewhere, you know, Barack, Barack hadn't been in office for six months. He's got to get us out of this. Hell, it took 235 years to get us here. I said, the one you voted for got you in here because I didn't cast one damn vote for Barack or the one you cast the vote for. He couldn't say nothing. He just looks at me like, I, 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 I know why he did that. When we first came here, he was a clown. He saw Oxymion, he saw me, he said, you ever heard the joke about the black boy and the white boy? I looked at him, I got right in his face. I was 240 pounds then, strong as a bull, big and thick. I said, we don't tell jokes on these land. Not here, man. I looked at him like that. You don't want to hear the joke? I got right in his face and I said, you don't tell your jokes here. I knew what he was trying to do. Hallelujah. Did he fear? Sure he did. He saw that 240 pounds of young, strong, youth, and powerful. Yes, he did. He wanted to create a spirit of mocking here. You don't do that here, man. I can patronize in his business. He won't even speak to me. His wife will. He won't speak to me. That's all right. He's a boy. And a boy doesn't know how to deal with a man. Hallelujah. He's a boy. I'm a man. Hallelujah, hallelujah. We don't regard ourselves. And yet we know that Yah is putting us through much testing uh, for the great trial that you will not sell, you will not give your yamim unto the powers of hell. That's why. Listen, Yisrael, we cannot allow this to fall into a thorny place in our bosom or by the wayside. Yahshua speaks unto us infallibly here in the book of Lucas 8.14. He gives us a demonstration when we care for the world. That's why uh, Enoch said they don't care for the world. They don't care for gold. Uh, and this mind that shall be overcharged by the power of darkness, they care for those things. Uh, and they're going to look after their need. That's why these liars are telling you to buy gold. Uh, I buy the pure knowledge of you. I buy emat. I buy truth. And if I don't eat for 15, 20 days, uh, if it's his will for me to suffer his pleasure, was it his will for Yahshua to suffer the way he did? Uh? Was he pleased with that? Did he bruise him? Uh, are we the body of Yahshua? He's going to bruise the body again. Uh, damn their goal. Uh. Yeah. Damn their money. Yeah. This you can't buy with gold and silver. Tell your lying preacher that. Tell these liars on the, on the internet talk about buying gold. Uh. Isn't that amazing? They're telling you to buy gold uh, and they're taking the, uh, what they call the fiat currency. Uh, stupid fools. Uh, and these fools buy into that. 
I had an ox to send me a bag of silver, a nice bag. There's a lot of silver in there. He went to the Philippines. He said, Reach, I'm getting out of this country because uh, it is a superficial, it is a false nation, and this is a people here that will not hear anyone. So he goes away to the Philippines to live. That's where he is, in the Philippines. He sent me a bag of silver. I don't want the silver. I trust in uh, the riches of Yah. Those that trust Yah, they trust in neither gold nor silver. So I said to my show, you want that? You, you can have it. I don't want it. She knows how much it's value. She, she, she. Have you sold any? You have. How many pieces? Oh my. I don't care. See, how did he know that? She said, this heifer hid that from me. Man. This heifer. She's a heifer. Y'all calls us, he calls us a backslidden heifer. Does he call us that? We are backslidden heifer. You all know what a heifer is? You know what a heifer is? Tell them what a half is. Talk so I can hear your mind. A cow that has never had sex. So I don't want to engage him with uh, some other spirit, all right? See? Hallelujah. That's what a half is. It's all right to be a heifer. Heifer. Hallelujah. Yoshua says in Lucas 8:14, and that which fell among thorns are they which, when they have heard, they go forth. Uh, and are choked with the cares of riches and pleasures of this life, and they bring forth no fruit. Did Esau bring, Esau bring forth any fruit? He didn't bring forth no fruit, did he? He did not bring forth no fruit of repentance. So that's why, yeah, we can't care for gold or silver. And that will be the catalyst of this powerful movement of hell, uh, to receive the strength of your right hand. To take you on the bondage and to cause your leech and to, that you give them the right hand of fellowship. You agree, you concur with them. So you can't care for the world. You can't care for things and the things of this world. You can't, Yisrael. We have food and raiment that will be content. Yah supplies all we need. Trust Yah for that. That's why He wants us to live among each other. That you're not selfish. Learn how not to be selfish. That you can share with all Yisrael. And this is a wicked world. Not any of these preachers will talk like this because uh, they're looking for monies and gain and self, self-satisfaction. They will not say, let's bring the monies together and let's do something. And when they do that, the people get upset. You're not taking mine. There was a couple, that was a group that came here from North Carolina. They haven't been back. Some years ago, they found us and they wanted to see the community life. And there was a woman with them. I said, first of all, you're going to have a problem with her because you, she needs to be quiet. You can't start, yeah, I, I'm that bold and that brazen. And, uh, she looks at me, why are you straight that? Because you, you talk too much. I'm here to talk to these men. And not you, ma'am. That's your problem. And with that spirit of a woman like that, she will cause your hell. Never heard from them again. Because the men were weak. She had pull and authority there. You understand? And that a dirty whole house. And the two men, one were very gentle. And I liked him, man. He was sweet. But I knew that woman, I said, she's going to cause you a problem. You're going to have to shut her mouth. She had the money. Well, she got land. I said, I don't give a damn who got the land. So when I say that, well, oh, he's kala, he's cursing. He used the word damn. He said, damn, damn the wicked. Y'all's going to damn them. You're damning them. I shut my mind from the wicked ways and the wicked attitude to draw me into that delusion. Quickly here. Hallelujah. We can't care for those things, Yisra'ya. We must care for yeah, I want to read few, three more uh, khatu for us here out of the book of Zechariah, the destruction of the enemies of Yisra'iyah. He's going to destroy this wicked one and those that are, are joined in a legion with him. Zechariah 49. And Yah shall be melech over all the Olam, the earth, in that day shall there be one Abba. And his name shall be Ichad. His name shall be one. His name shall be synonymous with his power. Zechariah uh, chapter 14 verse 9 and the end of this kingdom he's going to he's going to rule the earth his power shall be established and we shall rule out of Yerushalayim the city of Yah that's where it shall be but he says this to us out of all this I've read today he says this and this is important he says in Zechariah 3 12 Yah says I will also live in the midst of you an afflicted and unni or dal poor people and they shall uh, not botach, but hasach. They shall trust. They shall run into the 
power of my name, for my name shall be the protection and the tower and the pillar of confidence for them. They shall uh, hasa in the name of Yah. We shall trust. That shall be our tower. That shall be our place of safety. It shall be our place of protection. Not God, not Lord, but he said in his Hashem, his name, it shall be Yisrael. In this last verse here in the book of Enoch, Hanak 108 verse 10, he says this to us, I recounted in the books of all their blessings. He has caused them to be recompensed or to be repaid. For they were all found through all of your afflictions. They were all found loving Yahweh more than the fire of the eternal Nefesh. Moshe chose rather to suffer with the people of Yah than to enjoy the pleasures of sin for a season. Instead of you doing your thing and you having your own house and your piece of land, you suffer with Yisra'el Yah, that we enjoy the pleasure of Yah for a season that the cares of the life and world do not overtake us. You care more about television, you care more about feeding your greedy belly, you care more about making money, you care about more about that. There's a precious Zachane down there in Memphis, and I'm going to Memphis in May to have a meeting there. There's a pastor, Thomas Yah, and there's an Ach. He's a Zachane, elderly man, very faithful. His giving is tremendous. And he says this to me the other day. We were talking. He spent 25 years in the military. He's a very bright man. He's a man that knows how to make money. He put us on the radio station there in Memphis, Tennessee, on a Fox radio station, uh, sports station on Sunday, and all of these hell-bound, twisted folks listening, uh, they don't like what I'm saying. He said, I'm telling you, they have called in here, this damn crazy man. And he says to me the other day, he said, Ray, uh, I have always had the capability of making money, and you know, sometimes I just want to make money to do more for the works that say, hold up, my friend. I say, if you send $10 or $5, it's a great blessing. Whatever Yah puts on your heart is sin. There's no time to make money. It's time to buy the riches of Yah's Torah, His truth. You understand? There's no time to have your little garden to yourself. You go by and you see that in the heat of the day you've gotten weary and you can't even work it. You don't do a damn thing to it. It's overgrown, nettles and weeds. Hallelujah. And when you die, all the little money you put back, the man is going to get it. How about that? And there you just sit and listen. Your homes are being fed and you don't send a damn nickel. What a wickedness. Why listen to me? Hallelujah. Go to those that tell you don't give. No, you need to give. It costs to do what we do. Hallelujah. This is not free. It costs money. And if you were here, you would see the sparseness of the crowds. Not many. It takes money to do this. To maintain Hallelujah. It is the truth, man. Hallelujah. He says, and have recounted Hanak 108.10, <clears throat> and I recounted in the books of all their blessings. He has caused them to be recompensed for, for, for they are all found loving Yah more than the fire of eternal nefesh. Than their greed and their care and their lust. He said, and while they were trotten, the rach, Upon by evil people. Did not they trotten our evil mind? Trot down your shore. And they were trotted down upon by evil people. Experiencing abuse and insult by them. They continued blessing Yah. Did Yahshua do that? Can I point it out here quickly? Here as he speaks to us in great tribulation of the Sarah. Lucas 21-24. He said, and they shall fall by the edge of the sword, and they shall be led away into captivity into all nations. And Jerusalem shall be trodden down by the nations of the Goa and the Gentile until the time of the Gentile be filled. And there's a season and a time that we're going to be trodden down. Jerusalem represented the city of Shalom or the city where Shalom is taught. We are the city. We are a city that sit upon the hill, Yisrael, that the light of the Torah cannot be hid. And we're being trodden down by the evil and the wicked men of this earth. That's what we've been done, has been done. Hallelujah. And this is the attitude of many that say they love Yah. Shaul speaks here in the book of Ibram, Hebrews. 
the danger of this apostate mind that we operate in. That's what the enemy is doing. He's established this apostate nature to deny Yah that he can have the right hand and you will receive the mark. You receive that. It is not even logistic in this world, in some of the most rulers of places, in some of the places, even in America, for someone to go literally, it's a literal mark now, but it's not in the sense that we think that someone is going to go out to some of the, you, you got a billion people on the continent of Africa. Some live so out in the ruins. You got people all over the world in China. You got a billion point four people in India. Some of the poorest and the dirtiest people. How, how, how do you identify them all? How do you go within a span of uh, uh, three and a half years and put a mark in everyone's hands? Uh, this is what the whore has taught us. Uh, and we brought this damn mess. It's a mind that's been marked. There's an oath. We have the top of Yah. We have been sealed by the Ruach HaKodesh until the day of redemption. Fact. It can't be done. There are places they don't even have electricity. Miles from everything. You come in there, the folks, they got, they got food. They go, whoa, boy. Whoa, whoa. Hmm. <laughs> even the logistics. This, is going to be, this world is going to be in a debacle. Their damn infrastructure is going to be torn down. Just like America bombed Iraq. Say they love the people. They want them to be free. Hell, they're butchering each other there. They went to, to Misraim, Egypt, and took down that man. Tore up his damn house. Tore it up. They put on trial anyone they want to. But this damn dirty Mr. Punk Reagan and faggot Bush boys, why not put them on trial for butchering those babies? Why not? Mr. Kissinger? But yet they can go to some other country and butcher them and say, we, we want the people. They don't give a damn about them brown people. That's a fact. They kill their babies because they're greedy as hell. Let's get real, Yisrael. Yeah? They don't give a damn about those babies. I will, man. They dropped old bomb busters on those communities. You see that man the other day went there in Afghanistan and went out there and butchered 16 people, killed babies. What a coward. What a damn coward. And they establish these false illusions and we are people that's easily to be deceived. We won't believe Yah, but we believe the lies of the news reporters. Iran has a nuclear bomb. Hell, if they got one, we got tens of thousands. We can burn the whole world up ten times over. Why not you? You've been a coward. You tough. Your boys are tough. We can throw down in military power. Let's throw down with the, uh, with the Iranians. So just, just no bomb. Just go. Come on, hand to hand, baby. Let you get all your weapons there and say, let's throw it down. Let's go down, dog. Let's do it that way. You can't do it. Because your boys and your girls, they love sex. And them boys, they, man, you get killed in those countries committing adultery and fornicating. That's a fact. They're not sitting around playing all day video games. <laughs> Give me a soda pop, Billy. <laughs> Give me some cookies. And I send her all day. Yo, my name is Fat Daddy. I'm here to talk. I'm here to rap. I'm here to bop and talk. Come on. They're not there. They're not sitting there getting their brains blown out. They're not there. They're in their crazy book. The Quran. And so let's throw down, baby. Let's throw down with Iran. Let's throw down with them. Mr. Ahmadi, Ahmadina Dad, he said, put on your coat, bomber, baby. Put on your bomber jacket. Because I'm here, let's roll. Let's roll. Russia went into Afghanistan and they still didn't win. I never forget many years ago, one of the Afghans said, boy, we thought, sir, before we went in that they said before this country, he said the Russians thought that they were tough, but they were, they were tough boys. But after eight years, they saw they couldn't handle us. Those old Kaskalaskis rifles that they get from Russia, and they whip them with their own weapons. Kick the hell out of them. Russia says, time to go, boys. And Mr. Barack Hussein Obama said, we got Mr. Kazar, so we got democracy. You're a damn liar. The Congress we have, uh, Mr. Bush, uh, on, on what was that ship he was on? Big Banner is finished. Iraqis say, baby you, haven't the, baby, you haven't began the bang, bang, bang. Once we began that, we will see how we finish. They got all the magnificent technology, and yet they use IED, little old devices, and killing them mother thousands. This is a wicked country. 
I'm going to teach on this one day, the wars of this nation. And they're talking about they have fought for thousands of years. This nation, that's all she's been in in 235 years. At the rate that she's going, a thousand years, hell, she will supersede every nation. Because she has the ability to bomb. She's a coward. She can fly over. They say, we're going we're gonna to bomb I, 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 Iran. They don't give a damn about the infrastructure. They don't give a damn about the poor babies. They don't give a damn about the people that are suffering. They care about these rich bastards. That's what the scripture says. There's a sore even in the land. Shalomo knew that. Many riches kept by, by the owner to their own hurt. These are rich bastards. You got a man like Mr. Slim down there in Mexico. Most of the population are poor. He, he's worth $67 billion. And these bastards in Congress tell you there should be a minimum wage. You can't pay them. That's, that, they can't get that $7. Well, then it ought to be a minimum wage of getting rich. This is America. Obama wants to take our money. And he wants a capitalist stress from. Hell, you don't even, you, you don't even know what a, you, you don't even know what a, uh, not a capitalist system. What is that? Uh, uh, the form of government. Say it. What is that? Talk to me. Yeah, not a socialist system. It's not a, uh, a socialism. Is that the word they use? That ain't socialism. It's a system that, so we use that socialism. And yet Miss Sarah Palin says that, and, and yet the state of Alaska, people go there to live because they share in a socialist type of government. They get revenue from the all. Oh, everyone. I don't care if you're a baby. There are folks that got 10 babies. Every, if, if, the, if the revenue shed this year is $3,500 per person, every child, I don't care if he's that big, that big, you all just say $3,600 a year, $3,600, Ooh, that's enough to pay for you all all winter. It's winter there all the time. Social we want to take our money, give it to the poor, re redistribute it. Well, hell, the rich are doing that. They're taking all your money, and they're not redistributing, redistributing nothing. They're making you fight me because uh, you think it because someone is getting some kind of social privilege that you're not getting. You're a damn liar, man. Let's get real, and let's deal with the facts of the reality. Hallelujah. Closing here, last one. Hallelujah. He said we should be brought in. I want to read this from Ibrahim, Hebrews, Ibrahim, and I'm going to close here. I'm tired. Hebrews 10, 28. He that despised Moshe's Torah died without mercy on the two or three witnesses. How much more so punishment or worse punishment do you think he shall deserve who have trodden or trampled on the foot? Did not Enoch bring that out unto us? And while they being trodden by evil people, he said that, didn't he? And those that trodden on the foot, the son of Yah, and has counted the dam of the Brit of the covenant of Yisrael with wherewith he, he, he was made Kodash, a common thing, and has done despite they have insult unto the Ruach of the free unmerited love of Almighty Yah. How much more do you think they're going to pay? We're going to overcome Yisrael Yah. We're not going to overcome by our own strength. We're not going to overcome this mark by our own power. We're going to overcome by the dam of Yahshua Hamashiach. That's how we're going to come, and, we, and, we, and, and, and by the word of his Adad, his Adoth, his testimony, and we love not this world, and we not, love not the world or our lives unto the death. He has appointed us the death that our, our, our flesh will be destroyed with sin, will have no pleasure in us at all. We shall overcome, and we shall overcome the mark of this hand that we should not give our hands strength or our right mind over unto hell. We're not going to do it. May ya. Uh, and strengthen Kol Yisraya. I messed up, Achot Rafia. I'm later than I usually am, but that's all right. May the riches of your rest upon you all that have joined us on the live broadcast. May strengthen you all. May cause this Torah to fill your bosom. I do hope that, uh, well, if it did, if it did not, that's all right. If you listened, you would have been enriched and blessed. Your knowledge would have been open. There would be a fountain that flourish in you and flow. It is not, we don't have time, uh, Yisraya, for all these little uh, tweaky type messages that are going forth. There's only one message that must be declared. We, we're trying to save Yisraya. You, you can't even save yourself. How are you going to save someone? I'm praying for my son. Oh, you're praying. You're still living wicked. There's only one message. I want to read this and we're going to dismiss. There's only one message that must be declared in this hour. And we need men of strength and value and fortitude to declare it. These weak men today can't declare this. Yisraya. Hallelujah. They can't declare it. 
We need truth. We need Yah's Imat. Hallelujah, hallelujah. That's what we need. And no doubt about that. And that is the truth. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Yah is tough, isn't he? He is great. And we are going to obey him. We are going to walk in the commands of Almighty Yah. Hallelujah. There are two things. One thing I wanted to point out. Hallelujah. <clears throat> it's, it's in the book of Revelation. I want to read this. I'm not going to tell you where it's at, but it's here. Yorkahan says, I saw a melach flying in the midst of Hashem. I'm having, it says, the everlasting. I don't use the word gospel, but according to certain writers, they use the word gospel. But having the li'olam uh, vi'at, the everlasting bezorak, or the teaching, this melach had the everlasting now. The everlasting, that the message that should have been taught from the beginning, the everlasting message to preach unto them that dwell upon the earth. And it said to call every am, every nation, every people, every go em, and to every kindred, every umma, every tribe, every kind of people, every umma, and every loshon, every tongue, every language, every speech, and every am, every people, no one, no one will escape. He said that this was the message, saying with a loud voice, fear Yah. That's what must be preached. Yare, fear Yah. And give honor to him, for the hour of his judgment is come. And worship him that made heaven and earth, and the sea and the fountains thereof. He said, when I saw that, then after that, the fall of Babel. It must be declared. Well, we're, we, 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 we're going to, uh, uh, to, to, to bring in the sheep. You're not bringing in nothing. You're not even in. Hallelujah. Yeah. May the riches of your rest upon you all. May he strengthen you all, Yisrael. You that have joined us on the live uh, broadcast, or the live uh, stream, do assist us yeah, put, put, if he puts it in your heart. Help us, assist us. It calls to, to broadcast and all that, especially the live video, to broadcast live. Help us. You come visit us. We will do you right. We will feed you. We feed anyone. Even our enemies, we will feed them. We will feed you. And you will see what we have here. You will see. You will see that the... Uh, resource revenue is not much and that's a fact so help us there are people that write we send them booklets and think they write again and i'll write them back say my friend send an offering to defray the cost they'll go to mcdonald's and buy a damn death burger they'll stop at some of the nastiest places in the earth or i eat clean you eat in mcdonald's and these damn whole houses these these chitlin chopping places you're not eating clean they find fat back and pork chops and all that and lobsters and shrimp and you going to there eating out of these damn dirty places. I want you kind. Got something to look at. And these are the men that would tell you, well, a woman, she, she, she not even come in the house of Yah. She, she administrating her. Well, the woman, the, they had the issue of blood. She touched your shoe. These are the ones that talk like that. And they go to some of these stinking, dirty hog houses uh, and go in there and buy food and sit down and eat and grin uh, like hogs. Come on, right, man. Get on me. All right, I like that. I'm a fighter now. You should make sure you come to fight. Hallelujah. Make sure you come to fight. Make, make sure you got your war clothes on. Now, I don't mind. I don't mind getting whipped. I've been whipped many times. That's what a fighter, any man's a fighter, he's going to get whipped. He learned from his losses. He gets better when he loses. When he loses, he says, I tell you this and I must go. I remember as I came, old fellow, his name was Michael McGill. <clears throat> Of course, my girl here, you know, we weren't married then, but, you know, we were ready to get married. So Mike and Mogi, he was the baddest dude in town. Everybody, he loud mouth and he could, he could throw hands, too. You know, he could really, he could really, he could, he could move tough. So one day out there in Dawn Village, here we all out there one warm summer night, and he's loud. And so we throwing hands, and my woman watching me, and he made me look like a fool. He did. Just the truth, Emma. The boy whipped me nice. One day we were on the job working. He was the foreman. We were doing a garage. We were grading it out to pour the concrete slab. And I said, boy, you got me that night in front of my girl. Now, we're going to have to hook up again. Of course, he loud out there in that community. You can't handle me, boy. Let's close the door down here. I had my natural brother there with someone. James, they there, my natural brother, someone else. And we were in a confined space then. You couldn't move all around there now. Just a little old car garage. 
It was about 90 degrees that day we're doing construction work, and now let's throw down, you and me. You understand? And when I commenced the fire on that buttocks, when I finished with him, uh, that, that wasn't like what he put on me in front of a woman, you understand? I had to get that back. I had to redeem myself. And when I finished with Mike, back then he was a cat been in prison. Come on, he had spent five, six, seven years in prison, so he was a tough dude. But when I finished working on him, and then after I did that, of course, in the community back then, then we went to the basketball court, and I dogged him in basketball. And you know that was a double insult. And from that day, I never had a problem with that man because he knew that I could roam. Hallelujah. May Yah enrich you all, Yisra'ya. Let us be strong in the Amura and hold on to thee. And let us stand to our feet. Hallelujah. Cannot go around the Torah of Yah. Isn't that beautiful? Let us turn toward Yerushalayim. We're in this Shabbat here, this, here in this nation. And let us turn toward Yerushalayim and pray and lift our hands as we lift toward the house of Yah. And all things we barak you, our Abba, in Yeshua's name. We pray for the strength of Yisra'ya, your people scattered abroad throughout the nation. We pray for our strength. Guide us and teach us this day. Go with us on this Shabbat, this Shabbaton. This is your day. Give us uh, rest. Give us Shabbat as we rest this day, this Shabbaton. We ask all things in Yeshua's name. Those that join us on the live broadcast, strengthen their homes and bless. We ask all of these riches in Yeshua's mighty name. We shall barak Yerushalayim because you said you shall shalach prosper them that barak Yerushalayim. And all these things we ask in your Yeshua's mighty name and with our hearts and our minds we shout hallelujah. 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 Amen. Ya barak Yisraya.